Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. That means that at a point in my life and your life, the victory that we claim we have should become evident to all. Hallelujah. It should become clear to everyone that we are truly serving a living God. We sing it as choruses. Can I tell you why so many believers do not see the grace of God at work in their lives? The reason is because we, our convictions are not strong. We have not given priority to the things of the Spirit. We may be born again. We may even be filled with the Holy Spirit. Listen. It's one thing to be filled with the Holy Ghost, but it's another thing to submit to the influence of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Meditate on these things. The apostle said, I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these things, although ye already know them and are established in this present truth. In other words, once and again, the Holy Ghost will keep reminding us. It's not enough to keep learning and knowing new things. The Bible says ever learning, ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge, the comprehension of the truth. There's nothing as frustrating as claiming to know many things and yet it does not translate into victory in your life. Hallelujah. It can be frustrating because a time will come your knowledge. Listen, let me tell you, your knowledge only becomes useful when it is backed up with proofs. Are you getting my point? Results strengthen your words. They make people believe what you are saying. When you keep speaking and after seasons and seasons of your life, there is no proof of the efficacy of the word. Your word will not be highly esteemed in the ears of those who listen to you in the years to come by the grace of god we will still be teaching the same thing but it will be more powerful than it is now because there will be greater results back in the same word we are saying. see that years ago we said some of these things maybe not to this degree but it was the same conviction it didn't look as strong as it is now because the evidences were not much and over the years there have been more evidences and after 10 or 20 years, the evidence, the evidences will be so much. They said, this is a notable miracle. We cannot deny it. Hallelujah. May your life become a testimony that Jesus is alive. May your life become a testimony that when people stay with the Holy Ghost, He can make wonders out of their life. May your life answer the question that people are asking you. You don't need to respond. Just walk with the Holy Ghost and your life will write the answer. Hallelujah. So pay attention. Pay attention to the word of God. Pay attention. Hallelujah. The preacher said, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. 
do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart guard them like a treasure he says he says they are life not to christians but to those who find them and health to their flesh i believe the word of god i believe that he was not joking when he said verily verily i say unto you he that believes in me the works that i do he shall also do and greater works when he said that i believed him when he called me the head and not the tail i believed it lord let us believe in you cause us to believe in you let your convictions about god be very strong your conviction about God is a product of your revelation of Him. It's a resultant effect. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Tonight I trust God that we'll pray. I'm not so much teaching tonight. What, what I'm going to be doing tonight is what we call an admonition an encouragement a bracing up a reminder a recapping a restrengthening hallelujah because i don't want to just keep bringing so many revelations after revelations after revelations and then we do not see these things work in our lives i want i trust god and i pray this all the time that the word of God will prevail in our lives. Be it unto me according to your word. That's what Mary said. According to your promises I can stand secure carve upon my heart the truth that sets me free according to your word oh lord be it unto me be it unto me according to your word according to your promises I can stand secure Would you carve upon my heart The truth that sets me free According to your word, O oh Lord Be it unto me This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth it says but thou shalt meditate therein joshua chapter 1 verse 8 that thou mayest observe to do to do not to wish not to sing not to chorus not to argue to do all that is written therein and it says if you do it you will make your ways prosperous and you will have good success i believe this word i believe it has the ability to change my life i believe it is powerless if i ignore it i believe it is powerless if i refuse to act upon the truths that are there i believe it is powerless if i refuse to believe and pay attention to it but if i pay attention to it it will change my life. Hallelujah. Only you are holy. Only you are worthy. Only you are wonderful. For 
there's no one else like you who is faithful ever That you are receiving, that will be your song. It's a test. That if you take the principles of the word of God and you make up your mind, listen, listen, agreed that before now. You didn't have access to truth. Agreed that you were born poor. Agreed that you were born under yokes and curses and all forms of idolatry. Agreed that you were born under irresponsible parents. Agreed that you did not have the opportunity to get these truths on time. Agreed that you made a lot of mistakes and blundered and blunders in the past. Agreed. You may not be able to do anything about yesterday. But the Holy Spirit is still saying if you pay attention, you can still catch up. Hallelujah. You may not be able to do anything about yesterday. Some of us have made blunders out of our lives. Some of us have wasted opportunities. Some of us have allowed the devil to take advantage of a lot of things. Forget about that. See all your pain of yesterday as the school fees you have paid for ignorance but from today it is absolutely within your power to make up your mind and predict your future and the greatest way to predict your future is to create it the word of God is powerful but you will never understand the power that is in the word until you understand how it makes people powerful. The word of God does not make people powerful just by default. No. No. Hallelujah. Come, promise. Let me show you three things that the word of God does. It's an admonition tonight. Please pay attention. Let's call this guy a drunkard a smoker poor broke on his way to hell it is it's just an example irresponsible call him anything womanizer whatever just name it watch this this brother is the way he is listen to me because there is an ideology are you getting what i'm saying there is a mindset that was enshrined in him 
either as a result of his past as a result of his background as a result of the influences around his life so he grew up with certain convictions and based on what he knew to be greatness he grew up seeing other people smoking and drinking and sleeping around and they felt like big boys and he was attracted to their proposal of what they call greatness and he permitted it to become part of his mindset are you getting what i'm saying now he never as he is right now from the example i'm giving you he doesn't know this gentleman he doesn't know that there are laws in this kingdom he does not know that life can be predictable he does not know that it is up to him and the holy ghost to birth the quality of his life he's waiting for mother nature he's waiting for situations wondering why nothing seems to work hi and then listen 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 jesus christ the word of god comes watch this when the word of god comes the first thing the word of god does is to reveal to him the inferiority of his current position because you will never change until you are dissatisfied with where you are why should i change if i'm okay with where i am are you getting what i'm saying so the holy ghost opens you up to a new horizon through the world and you see that life can be lived at another level that there can be a level of excellence beyond that which you have seen and so this brother sits under an anointing like this and listens to the word of god and the word of god begins to challenge him at first he will resist the word because the word of god will make him take responsibility for his current position and we hate taking responsibility that's why we love passing blames to demons is that true we love passing blames to spirit entities and say they are the reasons and now this brother is finding out that there can be a quality of life and by the way when he is alone after drinking and smoking and living life at a lower level the truth is that in his secret place there is a cry are you getting my point he wants a life higher and greater i've spoken to all kinds of people cultists smokers and the rest there is none of them that likes their current state it's just that they have become slaves to strongholds and ideologies and the word of god comes the word of god comes and after the first message this gentleman goes back with two ideologies the one he already has that says you can go back join those friends live your life say it does not matter allow anything and hope that one day things will get better or take responsibility and realize that the word of god can frame a new life and when he returns and sits sufficiently under the word of god something begins to change hallelujah he permits this mind to be in him that was in christ jesus all of a sudden the grace to adopt the new mindset that is consistent with the laws of the kingdom this gentleman now knows that it's not like god chose to make others rich and leave others poor that's what mommy told him that's what daddy told him very innocent but it's not true now he knows that wow i can partner with the holy spirit and there is an economic system to this kingdom hallelujah then he now knows that being a father is not all about getting a woman pregnant and having children you must be ready to take responsibility because you are building another future and he's receiving this and he's changing and while it is changing his friends begin to notice that he's dissatisfied with the mindset he used to advocate are you getting my point as a result they will become envoys of the lower mindset and they will try to lure him back to where he's trying to live using scornings criticisms and all of that they say we give you two weeks all this church thing you are doing you will come back 
and then they find out that he never returns brothers and sisters in three or four years this same guy will come back this is him transformed now he's understood that christianity is not all about going to church and just singing hymns and worship and choruses that it is a school it's a programming it proposes a new mindset the same mindset that makes heaven the way it is and when he receives it he will now return and meet those guys still there by that time the other brother is already 33 or 35 are you getting my point his eyes already stained with drinking for years his mouth everything his life his liver is almost dying and this brother comes changed everything around him is changed you can choose to remain where you are you can choose to keep coming for koinonia and enjoy the euphoria of participating in an apostolic activity that God is doing in a territory you can choose or you can make up your mind and say Lord every time I come to your presence I realize that there are two mindsets that war in me and when I come I am ready to let my own ideologies die it was because I believed them look at the way they made my life I believed that sickness was the will of God a mindset I believed that my genotype would never change I believed that I can just die any day anyhow it's like that it happens if it comes give glory to God but when the word of God comes it begins to propose to you a new ideology it tells you life can be lived at another level Whereas you were depending on everybody. You've heard of all those kinds of things. And you, you are always hoping that people become successful. And then when they come, say, bros, anything. That's a mindset. And all of a sudden, the word of God calls you into a place where you realize that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And your mindset changes lay your hands upon your head and pray in one minute and say i allow my mindset to change go ahead pray before your presence came and changed me pray lay your hands upon your head and pray and say lord this mindset must change it must change I receive the mindset because I grew up in poverty because I grew up in idol worship but right now it must change it must change I receive the mindset as a result of my denomination but it must change my mindset about finances must change my mindset about my life must change my mindset about the Holy Ghost must change. My mindset about the body of Christ must change. My mindset about my future must change. My mindset about my academics must change. My mindset about marriage must change. My mindset about purity and holiness must change. My mindset about long life, it must change. I insist it must change. I insist it must change I insist it must change hallelujah listen listen all that needs to change in your life is your mindset the Bible says they limited God in the wilderness a man can limit God a man can limit God. Please bring this for me. Bring both of them in. If, if this is your mindset, watch this. If this is your mindset, this is all your ideology. And 
point. point. This is all you can receive of God because that's all your mindset has allowed. Whereas there is so much. So based on your mindset, this is all of God. Whereas there is still a lot more. Are you getting my point? If you will allow your mindset to expand, the Bible says, and when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped flowing. When the woman sat around and she said, this is all I have. God said, Todd, this is the limit to which I can bless you. If you brought more vessels, it would have continued. He says, go and borrow vessels, borrow not a few. And when she got to the limit of how much she believed, God said, well, this is it. If you give God a spoon, he will fill it. If you give him a teacup, he will fill it. If you give him a gallon, he will fill it. If you give him a jerry can, he will fill it. If you give him a drum, he will fill it. If you give God your space to walk in your mindset as regards success and your academics, he will help you there. But you will never see his hand in another area. If you give God opportunity to influence your ideologies as regards divine healing, he will stop there. You will excel as far as your health is concerned, but you will fail in other areas because they are keys. And I will give you not a key, the keys, 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 keys open different doors. So that you are excelling in one aspect of your Christian life should not make you complacent. There are other areas. The Bible says, Genesis 24 verse 1, and Abraham was old and well stricken and God had blessed him in all things. The Bible talks about a man called Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. Hallelujah. When you read from 2 Kings, I think, chapter 5, it talks about Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a great man. He understood the principles of war. But, as far as living in divine health was concerned, there was an issue there. Thank God for the areas you have gotten. Turn right now and focus on the areas where the word of God. This is how, listen, when I check areas of darkness in my life, I attack it like I attack the devil. Hallelujah. Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. Thank God for what I now know, but there is more. And I contend to bring light in every area of my life. And then at that point, there will be nothing short of beauty and glory from your life. The first question God is asking you tonight is how much of the light of God have you allowed? Some of us have mastered the laws of God as far as living in divine health is concerned. But some of us have refused to master the kingdom principles that bring wealth and prosperity. You are just not interested. Some of us have mastered prosperity but we've not mastered longevity. You must be able to come to a point it's a school the same way you take several courses you can't just take one and the word of god will pass you through a system of renewal and you will come out brand new and then everything around your life will begin to relate to you at the higher level that your mindset has adjusted to you don't need to change people you just need to change and everything around you will also change sometimes we believe when we change everybody around us then we will change not so not so hallelujah Bless you. so you must allow the mind of god to change you if i ask you today and i say ken can you come and hold the mic and share with the house share with us in five minutes what are the kingdom principles you have learned as far as living in divine health is concerned you have been attending koinonia for a while come and share with the house if you cannot share with the house that means something is wrong is that true if i i call this lady come i won't don't worry don't don't feel come 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 come, come. i won't embarrass you i'm not 90 years old i'm a young man praise god 
if I call this lady now and I say, sweetheart, in five minutes, talk to the sisters about the two or three major keys you think will make them virtuous women. I don't expect you to stand and say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you, you know, no. That means whatever you cannot teach, you do not understand it. You may be aware. That's how many of us read. And you find out that when you are in the exam hall, you say, I know it, but it can't come out because it's still in the realm of awareness. You see that? There are three levels of understanding or three levels of gaining knowledge. The first is awareness. The second is understanding. The third is mastery. If you study like that, you will do well. Many of us read and you know that what you've read is there scattered like, like a software somewhere in your head. And then when you see the questions, you know, you are saying, ah, bros, is it not what we reverse? It's not the issue. It can't come out because it has not entered the second phase, understanding. You see that? And the best of the best of the best in the kingdom are not just those who have understood, but they have mastered what they understand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say, I refuse to be a failure. Say it. I refuse to be a failure. It's not just by willpower. It's by subscribing to the terms of the word of God. You must honor this word. You, I don't just want to say word, 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 word. You know, we keep saying get the word. But the truth is for years I didn't understand what people were saying. I didn't understand what they were calling that word. What is it? Is it the verse? Because they say get the word. And I was wondering what is this Bible is plenty. So what is the word? Everything. I know people who know it off heart. And it has not changed their lives. Whenever you hear me say the word of God, I mean the accurate revelation of the principles of the kingdom. That's what I call the word of God. Not these vague things. People just say, get the word to mean just read scriptures. No, the accurate revealed word. The Bible says when he broke the bread, not when he held the bread. When he held it, they were still blind. But when the bread was broken, their eyes were open. Until the bread is broken, it cannot bless you. It was when he broke the bread and gave thanks that he began to multiply, to produce in their lives. Hallelujah. Throughout this year, so far, this is, this is the ninth month by the grace of God. And by God's grace, I have taught on several things. My goal for the year, when I was having my retreat for the year, I told the Lord to grant me an opportunity to minimize my travels, especially on Fridays. So that I will be around and available. I was talking to someone and I was telling him, if God gives you a walk and you later leave that walk because of international ministry, you are traveling around, blessing the whole world and you forget about your core assignment, you are, you are still a failure. Have you seen some parents who allow their wives and children, they can donate one million during a fundraising? Have you seen that kind of thing? And yet, they've not even paid the school fees of their children. No. Responsibility is to focus. Don't say, my bad. I'm not asking you to point people. Praise the Lord. So my focus, my, my goal, because the Lord told us that this is the year of light and dominion. Dominion that comes as a resultant effect of illumination. It's not just, I, I'm walking in dominion. No. Hallelujah. It's not just I'm walking in dominion. It's that there is an understanding. And I hope that we are learning something. I Look, some of you who are pastors here, or many of us that God will trust with ministries, don't deceive God's people. Don't stand on stage and waste their time telling the amount of the shoe you bought or this and that. Wonderful. You can bring in little jokes here and there. But you must make sure the same way a student is taught in school 
is the same way a Christian becomes an ambassador. Are you getting my point? No matter how complicated my teachings are, if you don't understand it to act upon it, I have not edified you. Hallelujah. That's why we try to make the word of God as simple as possible. So that we, my goal is not to say, wow, this is a man of God. Joshua Selman has revelation. My goal is that you understand the principles. How many of you have seen some lecturers that are very intelligent but they can't teach? Have you seen people like that? You know they are exceptionally intelligent. But when they enter the class, you almost have a headache because you know you are in for it. They are intelligent, but they cannot explain their conviction to the understanding of the students. And you find students failing their course. Not because the students are dull, but the capacity to transfer that knowledge to the students. But there are other lecturers when you see them, you are excited because they know how to make you understand their convictions. They can use stories. They can use jokes. Preachers, pastors, listen to me. Teach your congregation. Don't wow them with revelations. Teach them. Make them come into a comprehension. There are very little children here. There are old people here. There are young people here. When Jesus taught, although his teachings were hard, they were not hard because, they were hard because the power for the, the, the position it puts the people and the change they would, they would need to make as a result of that teaching was very difficult. Not because the teachings were so hard in that they could not be understood. He used parables. He used a lot of things. Hallelujah. Are you understanding the word of God? Are you understanding it? I taught, I've, I've taught, I think for, for years now, there are very few aspects of the kingdom life by the grace of God that I have not touched. We've touched on marriage. We've taught on, on, on finances. We've taught on leadership. We've taught on success. We've taught on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We've taught on demonology and deliverance. Different aspects of the kingdom life why because god wants to equip us not just that you are prosperous and that you do not know how to stand against the wiles of the enemy not just that you are sitting concentrating on demons and you do not know that there is an agenda to, to be fulfilled not just that you are praying in tongues and you are not relevant to your corporate world are you getting what i'm saying there are many people who pray in tongues but you employ them they will waste your money and waste your time and drown your work. But they are Christians. When it is 12 o'clock in your place of work and you say lead prayers, you will feel like you should just keep praying till evening. But when it comes to principles that bring productivity, they do not know, they don't care. And that, that faulty mindset comes from we preachers. That faulty mindset comes from the preachers. Hallelujah. We take our limitations and transfer it to the people. So if I am serious about praying in tongues and walking with the Holy Ghost, but I have not been concerned about leadership, I teach the congregation that is not necessary. Is that not true? I just tell them, focus on the Holy Ghost and your life will change. And so you will see an amazing church with the power of God, but there's no excellence. There's no excellence. You see that? Then there are people who is all about leadership and corporate governance and how to do it and principles of church governance and church accounting. Wonderful. But when it comes to the ministry of the Holy Ghost, they kick it out. Everything is intellectual. So you have an excellent church. And they run the church like, 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 like a CEO running his conglomerate. But the Holy Ghost is not there. They are too organized. God cannot find expression. Not for five minutes. If this guy is supposed to sing for five minutes. And for any reason. 
God just feels like extending his grace and his power upon the people is in trouble. No matter where they are, they must come down for the service to continue. Hallelujah. Then there are people who are not serious. They won't go for work on Monday, Tuesday. They won't apply for work. They'll say, I know my God is faithful. I can get jobs without, without application because of one or two testimonies that have come. Hallelujah. And they sit down at home. The children are getting sick. The wife is getting angry. There is no testimony of the grace of God there. Monday they are in church. Tuesday they are in church. Wednesday they are in church. And I mean from morning to evening. Thursday they are in church. Friday they are in church. Saturday they are in church. And the wife has one small shop that the man is eating everything there because he has not been taught that if you delay gratification, it can bless you. And they don't care. So although they are praying, they are fasting, but they are not rightly dividing the world. And so as a result, there are dimensions of God they will not experience. Every time they go to church, they will fall down. I guarantee you, they will see visions. They will prophesy to you but they will not be relevant to the corporate world. Therefore, we must be built. Remember the teaching, the full gospel. We must be built holistically. And this is what, by the grace of God. Not everybody. See, there are preachers, the way they preach, if you don't plan to be a preacher, their ministry is useless to you. Are you getting my point? And it's not accurate. Because you now turn a CEO to become a man of God. And he finds out that he's struggling. And you say is that he's not spiritual enough. Whereas you are bringing him out of his grace into something else. So in many churches, the hallmark of spirituality is when you become a pastor. So CEOs, leaders, bankers, all envision times when they will become pastors. Ladies look forward to the pastors. A brother comes, they say, Who are you? He says, Well, I'm, I'm a brother, one partner. He says, Please go away. I'm not preparing my life for any kind of anyhow person because a mindset has been given that if if you are excellent and the preacher approves of you, he will stamp you by making you a pastor. But the kingdom is not like that. Our concept of the gospel. It's not just going to tell somebody Jesus is coming, which is a, an important component of the gospel. But it says, go ye into all cosmos. 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 I've said it again, that the gospel is not just a message. The gospel is an ideology that seeks to enthrone Christ and his value system above a system that does not honor him. So if you embrace the gospel, it should do certain things. It should save you it should prepare you it should empower you and it should release you strategically to be relevant hallelujah so that we now teach people that not everybody is going to be in the fivefold ministry and that the dimensions of the fivefold ministry does not end in the pulpit are you getting my point so when you find out that there is a desire for you to go into finances and be a CEO, you do not see it as being less spiritual than an apostle or a prophet who is standing on stage. Are you getting my point now? We have been taught that these things are of lesser value. They are not. Because by and large, the preacher will find out that the gospel is free, but the means to carry it is not free. Hallelujah. There are many men of God that have powerful messages to give but they are broke they are on air and they can only pay for 10 minutes while they are about sharing a powerful revelation they just cut it program over that's the limit of your money and when we ignore the ministry of kingdom financiers we can have all the encounters of the spirit but it will not be relevant are you getting my point now there needs to be people in the area of governance who can stand and advocate the confab just finished right now and i was so happy because the advocates that was were there to represent the kingdom are thorough men men of both intelligence and men of spirituality so i was very comfortable 
because I knew that the constitution of this country will be altered for the glory of God. But assuming there were all these kinds of people who don't pay attention, you go to a confab now, you sit down, you are praying in tongues and you don't know anything about the history of your nation and they ask you a question and as a stakeholder representing the body of Christ and you disgrace us there and say something, you say, oh, the Lord told me, they don't know this. They don't know this. Daniel, Daniel in the Bible was a man who showed us how you can combine spirituality and governance. And through the dispensation of three kings, he reigned and he could not be rejected. Are you understanding the gospel now? This is the gospel. And like, like Azuka was saying, now you see, with his spirituality and his understanding, he's going into the area of the media because he understands there is a mountain there. Praise the Lord. When they are kicking God and everything that is of God out of the media and we are here shouting and praying in tongues, there's got to be men of power and fire that will get up there supported by kingdom financiers and prayer warriors but they will go. They will be able to translate the ideologies of the kingdom to transform society. If your knowledge of God cannot transform society, it is a waste. That's what John Wesley said. If your knowledge of God, your knowledge of God must sustain the ability. Listen, 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 listen. If I plant a church in a region and after five years, the community does not see the relevance of the gospel, I'm wasting their time. Is that true? Believers, unbelievers and everyone should attest to the fact that there are a people with a mindset. So with time, they see that there are miracles happening. Supernatural acts of God. But then they see that with time, a school is built for that community. And after five years, children who would not have the opportunity to go to school, now go to school. And you build the school and introduce new curriculums. You know, I've, I've, I've told the workers, by the time God permits us to start building our schools, there are three courses we are going to add. You must write it from Genesis 1 to SS3. Number one is called spiritual growth. Number two, financial education. Number three, I don't know what the name is. You must do it from beginning till you finish. We're not just going to teach social studies and, 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 uh, uh, and, and uh, biology and all of those kinds of things. Elementary science. Thank God for those things. We must educate the people. So that our children are relevant to society and still sustain the values of the kingdom. Listen, I'm teaching you how to transform society, not just how to build your ministry, how to make your ministry relevant. There are many of us by the grace of God. The reason why our parents are glad that we are coming here is not just because of praying in tongues. They are seeing our ideologies change something is changing about your life you are adopting value systems that are attractive when we become agents of change by introducing a mindset that can affect society then they will listen to our gospel hallelujah but for as long as the church keep behaving like fools on stage people just come and they see us bouncing and praying <laughs> And the moment we finish everywhere is rowdy rowdy there's there's all kinds of disorganization no system for honor no system to build people there is no structure you don't behave like that because many many pastors and many ministers we have not been told that we are also agents of change in the institution you see that we, we are not we are not told that our relevance transcends just spirituality we have not yet seen ourselves as agents of change to society may God make every one of us here an agent of change in the name of Jesus Christ that with your understanding of the kingdom you will build schools you will build roads in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ not just that you will heal the sick and cast out devils but that your understanding of the kingdom will be able to translate into something that society cannot refuse hallelujah
That's what was happening. We must build people. We must build people. Sunday Adelaja, one great man I, ad I admire so much. He led the orange revolution in Ukraine. Ukraine is a communist nation even till today. But that man, not very eloquent in speech, Sunday Adelaja was able to go to Ukraine and he, he understood the kingdom and he put the kingdom to the test and he brought the government to its knees. He showed how governance and the apostolic ministry, he raised a people. He was a great man, but he was broke. And he sat down and studied the principles of the kingdom and in six months he became a multi-millionaire in dollars. And in two years he raised 200 multi-millionaires in his church from the scratch, from nothing. You think the government will not? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. There is a level of relevance that you can command that even if you are not the first born in your family, you don't need to steal any birthright. Wisdom and influence will give it to you. Whoever can bring anything on the table is the one who speaks. If you can't bring anything on the table, you cannot speak any kind of story. Whoever can bring anything on the table that you are praying and the moment you finish praying, that prayer translates into wisdom. Hallelujah. Wisdom is the ability to know God's perspective about everything in life. Tell me what can I do? I can live without you. I can live without. So tell me what can I do? I can live without you. Hallelujah. Say the word of God is changing me. Brothers and sisters, I have a guarantee. You will be so successful, it will shock you. No, I'm telling you. The word of God is making you become something you cannot even stop. Hallelujah. The word of God. I know people here by the grace of God who were either of the other faith or came here with all kinds of mindsets. And I am amazed. I'm amazed to see what God is doing and we give him all the glory and by the grace of God days will come we will celebrate greatness at another level if you are interested join us there if you get there you don't find me you've not arrived there a day will come we will celebrate greatness at that level yes some of you will just go to your village and count the local government there and say please this land build churches this is the budget for the kingdom this is the one to sustain the pastors for the next five years let me know when it gets to three years and it's as if you just gave money for a recharge card because you have gotten the knowledge of the kingdom see see let me tell you something maybe let me digress this is an, admi an admonition are you getting blessed tonight listen do you know i was sharing with someone yesterday if all the wealth of the world you know there are people who are angry today they are saying if they distributed money it would have reached all of us in nigeria let me tell you something distribute the money in nigeria equally to everybody if you are pregnant you will get for you and your baby i guarantee you in 24 hours it will return back from where it came from because there is a there is a mindset the poor people will do the same foolish things they've been doing although they are spiritual and then it will leave them but the gift of a man the gift of a man the gift of a man by now you know that you have something all your life you've been told you are nothing they call you a lodo and you, at a point you even answer it yourself you believe it but the word of god lets you know that the gift of a man say i have something say it i have something that the world cannot reject i have something I have an ability I have an anointing I have grace I have wisdom I have insight 
I have intelligence. The world cannot reject it. And they will pay you for it. They will pay you in ways that will surprise you. You will see it happen. Brothers and sisters, my Bible tells me that if the cloud be full of rain, hold on, you are not seeing anything now, but it doesn't mean any, nothing is happening. Even the devil is a witness that you deserve to be blessed. Even the devil, he's watching your commitment. He knows he's a witness. Satan ran to God and said, Kai, this Job's issue. God said, have you considered my servant Job? Satan said, I tried, I tried. We will feed nations. We will feed nations. Some of you will set up publishing firms that produce the Bible in any language. Any. See, this is kingdom advancement. Kingdom advancement is not just intercession. Kingdom advancement is getting up to confront the gates of hell. And there are tools that help us to confront those gates. Number one, the anointing. Number two, wisdom. Number three, excellence. Number four, prosperity. These are all the tools that will empower us to confront the gates. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is what God is making out of your life. This is what God is making out of your life. But the question I want to ask you before we continue is that are you paying attention to what God is doing in your life because I don't want to assume all of us are paying attention there are some of us as you are hearing this thing you're just rejoicing because you're part of the crowd but you know that if it's to be one on one you and God you're not doing anything you don't even believe what we are saying it looks like we're just gyrating the beautiful thing about success is that it is an individual affair you can choose to believe it or not if you don't believe it will take care of you in the future but if you believe it together will do great things for the kingdom hallelujah praise the lord that the lord will be able to use me to do anything he wants to do that when god wants to bless people financially i can be available that when god wants to heal the sick i can be available when God wants to transmit the knowledge of the kingdom, I can be available. This is my prayer. I'm not just, I don't just want to be relevant in terms of preaching. So if there is no sermon to preach, I cannot do anything for the kingdom again. No, sir. No, sir. Jesus was relevant when he spoke with the scribes and all of those people. He spoke intelligently. When he spoke with tax collectors, he spoke intelligently. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are four dimensions that we must all operate to see the fullness of God in our lives. Lord, if you're healing someone in this city, please don't do it without me. Just bring out your notebooks. Don't do it without me. That's always my prayer to you. Lord, if you're using great men in this nation, please don't do it without me. Oh, I'm available. Don't do it without me. Before I teach on these four aspects, can you pray? Pray and say, Lord, whatever you are doing, I'm available. Don't do it without me. If you're looking for prayer warriors, I'm available. If you're looking for financial apostles, I'm available. You're looking for career people who will do great things for the kingdom, I'm available. Those of us outside, make sure you are praying. The Lord is hearing you. Lord, if you're looking for intellectuals, men who can combine wisdom and intelligence with spirituality, I'm available. I'm available. I'm available. I'm an agent of change. I'm an agent of national transformation. 
Alléluia. Alléluia. Please look up. Revelations tells us that at the throne of God Almighty and the Lamb, Jesus Christ, there are four living creatures. Four living creatures that are before the throne. And it tells us the first living creature has the face of a lion. Hallelujah. The second living creature has the face of a calf or an ox. The third living creature has the face of a man. And the fourth living creature has the face of a flying eagle. And now realize that everything in heaven is a reflection of who God is. Everything in heaven. Hallelujah. Everything. The construction of the tabernacle from the court of the temple right to the most holy place. Everything speaks about dimensions of God. So it is in heaven. All of the things in heaven attempt to describe the majesty and the glory of God. So the four living creatures are four major dimensions that every believer who wants to reflect the image of Christ in his fullness must be able to walk in. Number one is the face of the lion. The lion is an animal that is known for strength, attitude, courage, dominion. The face of the lion talks about the dimension of your Christian experience. Where you must walk in dominion and authority. God wants that in a bid to reflect his glory. You must be able to demonstrate the authority of the kingdom. You must be able to walk as a king. Revelation 5 verse 10. It says we have been made unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign, reign, reign. Hallelujah. Bible says those of us who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness he said we shall reign in this life hallelujah say I am royalty everyone say it, I am royalty yes this is a dimension of God that he wants you to reflect because he is a king the royal one and he wants you to walk in that authority the centurion said to Jesus and he got Jesus interested. He said, for I am a man under authority. Aha. Uh -huh. Authority. And by reason of being under the authority of the government of Rome, I can tell one, go, and he will go. And I can tell the other, come, and he will come. And Jesus said, I have not found such a faith. In other words, I have not found such a mindset and a perspective of the kingdom. No, not in Israel. Although this guy is not part of the commonwealth of Israel, I'm seeing him manifest an understanding that belongs to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Everybody say authority. If you are not walking in authority, there is a dimension of the kingdom experience you are not revealing. You must walk in authority. Authority. There is a difference between authority and power. Power is the force that produces change. Power is the force that produces change. Authority is the legal right to legislate. The legal right to legislate. So good luck can say tomorrow is public holiday. That's not power. That's authority. The police officers and the soldiers don't have authority but they have power. So they can carry their guns and they can carry their koboko. They enforce compliance. Hallelujah. The beautiful thing is that we have authority and there is an anointing put in us. It's called dunamis. Hallelujah. Is the power of the Holy Ghost that enforces compliance. That's why it is released as we speak. So Elijah, the book of James tells us, was a man of like passion. And he prayed earnestly that there be no rain for a space of three and a half years. And while he prayed, there was an energy of the Spirit that compelled the territory to comply. Say, I have authority. 
Say it. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give you authority. The Greek word is exousia. Exousia. I give you the capacity. is delegated power. The ability to stand in the stead of another. That means the ability to walk in the shoes of another. Move in my office. When Jesus gave us his name, he gave us his authority. The name of a man represents his office, his identity. That's why they asked the man, they said, Peter, I mean, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, but who are you? Where is your office? Hallelujah. When Jesus sent the, tw the, the 12, and also when he sent the 70, the Bible says they all returned rejoicing, and he asked them a question. He said, when I sent you, not when you went on your own, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? When I sent you. Everybody say I'm sent. Comes from the Greek word apostolos. Titus 1 verse 1. The highest envoys of the king. So the king brings them. And trains them. Hallelujah. Prepares them. Teaches them his ideologies. And he sends them to go and colonize a country on his behalf. Comes from the Greek word apostolos. The envoys of the king. That's where you get the word apostle. And that's where you get the word ambassador. Envoys that are sent. Everybody say I'm sent. Say it, I am sent. The Bible says as my father has sent me, so send I you. Do you believe it? So say I'm sent with the backing of heaven. Say it, I am sent with the backing of heaven. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus teaching on the mount what we call the Beatitudes. Or the constitution, the unveiling of the constitution of the kingdom. He says, ye are the light. Not of your church, not of your denomination. You are the light. You give illumination. Light of the world. He said, you are a city, not like a city. You are literally a city that is set upon a hill. That cannot be hidden. And he says, neither do men light a candle, a lampstand, a lampstand and put it under a bushel. It's of no use. If you are a lampstand because you are, Revelations chapter 1, the Bible begins to tell us how that John saw. He turned and he saw seven lampstands. And those lampstands represent the Catholic church. The word Catholic is the word the universal church. The church of the firstborn the church that has no ministry name represented in the seven lampstands and he said in the midst of the lampstands i saw one so god is always in the midst of his people he said in the midst of the lampstand i saw one like the son of man and he began to describe a lot of things hallelujah so say i have dominion how does that dominion become a reality through the revelation of the word of God in you. I told you dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is not something you claim. It's not something you jack yourself into some spooky feelings. Dominion is a byproduct of knowledge. Knowledge and understanding. Psalm 82 verse 5. They know not, neither do they understand. And so they walk in darkness and the earth is out of course. Verse 6. Have I not said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. He said, but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. Hallelujah. Very important. You must realize that you have dominion. But that dominion is there potentially. As you begin to access the light of God's word. It puts you in a position where you can walk in that dominion experientially. Hallelujah. I have dominion. Over principalities. Over powers. Over thrones. Over every name that is named. And my dominion is exercised on the strength of my understanding of the way the realm of the spirit works. And so I can tell this demon spirit, stay and go. And when he looks, he will see the foundation upon which that statement comes. And he knows that I'm not just making empty noise. Hallelujah. Because every time I speak to that spirit and I say go, there are many scriptures that support my conviction. The Bible talks about the angels who excel in light and excel in strength. 
who confirms the words of his messengers and i am sent because i am a messenger so when i speak i expect the backing of heaven so don't just speak there must be revelations that sponsor your confidence if i if i turn to Folake and i say be healed what is the revelation that backs up this that i've said if there is nothing she will not be healed hallelujah so as i stand i remember that the spirit that raised christ from the dead dwells in me i remember that i've been authorized the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth acts 10 38 with the holy ghost and with power and the bible says he went about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed not all day that were sick so every sickness is an oppression so when i tell her be healed i know that it's an oppression hallelujah hallelujah and when i speak and i say be free there is an anointing that leaves me and i understand from isaiah 10 27 that that anointing breaks yokes it takes away burdens when i prophesy and i say in the name of jesus let a new season be open unto you i understand that the bible says to appoint unto them that mourn to appoint you know what it means to appoint to set a date for their liberty dominion you must learn to walk in dominion to exercise your authority and frankly speaking the church has made progress there we have done a lot helping believers to understand what we call their identity in christ which is very important that i am seated with christ i'm above sickness i'm above poverty i'm above failure i'm above defeat i'm not a non-entity dominion all the aspects of our kingly dimension but the trouble is that sometimes when if all you see in your christian experience is just that face of a lion you will get into pride and arrogance and you will never serve the king it will make you self-centered because you will think it's about you you know that when king's reign is all about them is that true every kingdom operates on a monarchy system and monarchy is about the king not the king and many people a monarchy is not a democracy nobody votes the king so when you have the understanding of your kingly dimension there is a disclaimer there because you may be tempted to think that all jesus did was all about you and you alone so god introduces you to the next dimension the face of a calf which speaks of sacrifice and servanthood so he helps you know that you are a king you have dominion but it does not stop there and if you stop there you will not reflect the image of the christ in its entirety so we have a lot of people hallelujah i have dominion and they have the jeeps they have everything they have all of these things but they are not relevant as far as the kingdom is concerned they are not doing anything for god it's all about me i received an alert yesterday i did this and that me me myself i am reigning hallelujah i'm going from glory to glory and god says when will it stop being about you and turn to become that of the kingdom so he introduces you to the face of a calf or an ox in bible days an ox or a calf was the animal that was used to plot the land that's why the bible says do not muzzle the ox that treads upon the corn so they use ox oxes and and wild animals all of those things to be able to thresh the land it says the field is wide but the laborers are few he said pray or the lord of the harvest pray that he will send laborers when it comes to working for god you are not a son you are a servant you see that you must understand that dimension when it comes to service in the kingdom you no longer talk about sonship as it were no you talk about servanthood so paul can say paul a born servant paul a born servant because he spent his entire life and went all across Asia Minor and went trying to advocate the ideologies and the counsel and the principles of the kingdom. Everybody say, I'm a king. 
I'm royalty, but I'm also a servant. You must be able to know this. When you realize that you are a servant, when you are doing your intercessory ministry, you can do it sincerely. So you can fast and pray for two or three days and not mention anything about yourself because you realize that you are a servant. Are you getting my point now? You are a servant. A servant is a property. That is a dimension you must know about God. Thank God for being one with Christ. But if that's all you know about his image, you are not reflecting him properly. You must get to a point where you know that the same Bible that says we are seated with Christ said we have been bought with a price. Know ye not that your body has become the temple of another. So that, that revelation of a calf brings you to a point where you can lay down your life. You can do anything for the kingdom as far as service is concerned. So your money can go for the kingdom. So you can inconvenience yourself for the kingdom. As a man of God, you go for a meeting and there's no AC there and it's a bike that will drive you, that will, that will, that will ride you to the place and you don't sit there and say, with my status, I'm a king. Come on now. Uh-uh. You're a king, but you're a servant. Is that true? And that although you love the Lord, you are not afraid of service. Everybody say, I'm a servant. Say it, I'm a servant. I live to serve the king. Say it, I live to serve his purposes. I live to serve the king. I live to serve his purposes. It's not enough to know that you have dominion. It's not enough to know that you are a king. You must know that you live to serve the purposes of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me so whatever inconvenience it may bring to you you are willing to go through it Paul said so then death works in us that life will work in you although you are a king although you are royalty if it takes cleaning the house of God you can do it as a millionaire CEO and you know that I am a servant, a born servant. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Celebrate John Christ. Good to see him. Hallelujah. Everybody say I'm a servant. Say it, I'm a servant. It's not enough to know that you are king, you have dominion. You must realize that the purposes of the kingdom will only be executed when you become a servant. And can I tell you something? When you take up the posture of a servant, your gift for being a servant is access to light and revelations. Revelations 1 verse 1. The Bible says the revelation of Jesus which he showed unto John his servant. You must be a servant to access that revelation. In Joshua chapter 1, God speaking to Joshua said, Moses, my servant is dead. Although Moses commanded authority, he demonstrated dominion. But he died a servant. This is a dimension of the image of God that you must reflect. It's not enough to have dominion. It's not enough to know you are one with Christ. You must realize that you are a servant. Everybody say, I'm a servant. Preacher, you are a servant. As a worker in the house of God, you know that you don't just come and carry your status and say i'm a great man no you serve you serve hallelujah and then the truth is sometimes as an ox when you serve you get to a point where people can break you down is that true the bible says don't muzzle the ox the ox can be hungry there are some times, have you, have you seen how certain donkeys get tired and even fall? Because they stretch them. And so he introduces you to the third dimension, the face of a man. 
your humanity is also a reflection of the image of the Christ that in as much as you realize that you are you have authority you are invincible and in as much as you have adopted the purposes of the kingdom and you have pledged your life don't forget that that is not all there is to reflecting the fullness of the image of the Christ and the third face was the face of the man notice the progression the face of the man why the face of the man because there are times you must you must permit your humanity to play when you are trying to reflect Christ it is not spirituality to hide your humanity so you see Jesus revealing his humanity he was hungry Jesus was hungry you will not be fasting every day of your life you are a human being Jesus was hungry Jesus wept Jesus was heartbroken so when you find yourself crying someone died and you're crying and someone said come on man up square up no no allow your tears it's not a symbol of weakness there is a dimension of God that permits that operation hallelujah so Jesus hears that Lazarus his brother is dead and Jesus goes to the tomb and the Bible says and Jesus wept John 11 the 35th chapter and Jesus wept he said we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity the word infirmity is there is the word limitation not sickness limitation hallelujah all through scripture you see God using imperfect man as a, as, an, as a system, not as a human being. Man, if you describe man as a system, man is flawed. That's why in the making of the bread, he said, add a little leaven. Because leaven stands for imperfection. He said, add it. Although it will be used in my temple, add it. The beautiful thing about God is that he does not wait for you to be perfect before he uses you. He can be building you on the go. Hallelujah. See, all the people that God used in scripture, they were not perfect people. From murderers like Moses to womanizers and killers like David to temperous people like Moses, idol worshippers like Abraham, angry people like Elijah, emotional people like Ezekiel. Hallelujah. erratic people like Peter unstable people like Thomas hallelujah yet in the midst of their imperfections his purposes still came to pass this is what makes him mighty the ability to birth his purposes in spite of your limitation everybody say I'm human say I'm human the man that pioneered the Welsh revival the man that pioneered the Welsh revival died not because it was his time he died because he understood that he had dominion and he knew that he was a servant serving the king but he forgot that he was a human being it was said he literally walked himself to death because he believed that if he did not frontier the revival it would be corrupted so based on his fear of the revival being corrupted and then the corruption now attributed to him he took his humanity I mean he forgot about his humanity and he died do you know there are many geos and great men that died before their time because they want to win the whole world they have over 30 or 40 ministrations in a week flying all around and they are tired I used to be like that until the day God gave me this revelation I literally killed myself because I believed that I didn't want to fail God there are times that I would pray for hours I would spend time and then when I'm about to go and rest somebody will now send me a text that's when the person has finished sleeping wipe sleep from his eyes and they will they will say very very attractive things like God sent you to us and you know I'll feel that burden of ministry now uh -huh. when I finish praying if your text come if the one who created the heavens and the earth does not save you 
I will not kill myself. Uza went to help the ark and he died, but the ark never fell. Hallelujah. So be careful because some of us are literally killing ourselves. You are priding in the fact that you are getting lean. You have convinced yourself that it's a sign that you are spiritual. That when men see you and your voice is husky, your face is oily, the, the, your appearance, there's nothing to be desired about it. You equate it to spirituality. Not so. There is a dimension of your humanity. And God rested. God rested. And the proof of rest is that you cease from your work. You must rest. If you plan to use your body for a long time, you must create a system. I used to say yes to every ministration. Jack of all trade, going to win the whole world. And one day the Lord gave me a revelation. He told me to look at a cross and he said, your face is not the one on the crucifix. You didn't die. No, I mean it. Very seriously. And it dawned on me that I'm only a member of the body, not the body. So the best that I can be is an effective member of the body. There are many men whose families have gone down the drain because they are doing ministry. The children never get to see their father. The husband never gets to spend time with the wife. John Lake. How many of you have heard of John G. Lake? When John G. Lake's wife was about to die, John G. Lake's daughter said if John Lake was around, the mother would not die because he was there trying to save the world his wife was dying the daughters wanted their father but he was there becoming a lion and becoming an ox and he forgot that he was a human being and he came back to meet the obituary of his wife everybody say i'm human say it i'm human it's okay to cry yes it's okay to make mistakes absolutely absolutely it's all right to make mistakes samson allowed his humanity to go to the extreme when he followed a woman called delilah so i'm talking about the extremities of humanity because some of you this part of it has consoled you so much you are saying are you kidding so i'm human so you can just do everything and say, I'm human, I beg. I'm human. Slept to the lady, I'm human. I took the beer, I'm human. Samson allowed his humanity to go so far. And two things happened to him. And it will happen to anybody who allows his humanity to prevail over his spirituality. Your source of illumination will be taken and your glory will be taken from your life. Two things. The hair of a man the Bible talks of a woman's hair being the glory. That means man as the bride of Christ has his hair representing his glory. And the Bible says two things. She was not interested. You would think that Delilah would cut off the hands of Samson. Is that not what he uses to beat people? He said immediately remove his eyes. Because if thy eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. So when you allow excessive humanity, there will be no illumination. So you don't fast again, you don't pray, you don't constrain yourself because you feel I'm human. The source of illumination will grow dim. That's what happened to Eli. Eli began to be so conscious of his old age. He allowed his humanity to interrupt his priesthood. And the Bible says his eye began to become dim. And it takes us to the fourth phase. The face of the flying eagle. So although you are human, Less you allow your humanity to cross beyond its boundary. It reminds you that you are from above. The flying eagle. That there is a technology in the spirit that is able to remedy for the predicaments of your humanity. And then the Bible now begins to say, I know that even the young men can grow weary. The youth can faint. I know there is a provision for your humanity. It's not backsliding. I know there is a time you cannot pray. It's, it's natural. 
I know there is a time you may not want to study the word. There is a time challenges will overwhelm you. But it says there is a technology in the spirit that has been made available to supplement for that predicament. It says they that wait upon the Lord. It said they shall renew their strength. And they will mount up with wings. Not like birds. Like the eagle. That was the eagle there. They will mount up with wings. Like the eagles. So when men see your humanity and they see that you are perplexed on all sides everything is happening and it looks like you will never come out all of a sudden you sustain the technology in the spirit we will run and not grow weary we'll walk and we'll not faint for the lord will go before us and his joy will be our strength mountain up with wings as eagles as the spirit says his soul we will come into his presence we'll wait upon the lord you know the song we will wait upon the lord oh hallelujah for in his presence is fullness of joy the technology in the spirit so the guy disappoints you and he said I won't marry you again no? I've just been looking for a way to tell you and although you are a great woman of God you will see your humanity find an expression you will cry and then when you come for koinonia like this you hear songs like this and it's a technology in the spirit that begins to mount you up with wings as an eagle and like Job, you said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my change comes. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Oh, powerful. Can we sing that song? We will wait. We will wait upon the Lord. For in his presence, this fullness of joy and our strength shall be restored as we wait upon the Lord. Just the voices alone sing. We will wait upon the Lord for in His presence is fullness of joy and our strength shall be restored as we wait upon the Lord so your rent is overdue it's okay for your humanity to find expression Time has gone and marriage doesn't look like it's coming. You are now 36, 37. It's okay to be human. Hallelujah. You've been wearing one trouser for the past five months. It's okay to worry about it. Don't say I don't care. Care. It's okay. Hallelujah. Every guy you smile at is frowning at you. You are a human being. It's okay for your humanity to find expression. You started a church and after three years, you are just seven. It will disturb you. No matter how a man of faith you are, it's okay. You trusted God that at this level of your life, you will be soaring financially, but it looks like it's not so. It's okay, you are human. But remember that you are also a flying eagle. And it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Mm. And so they held Samson bound in his hands. And that was a symbol of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. And not much could be done because the Philistines held these two ministries that represent the foundation of the church. But the Bible says all of a sudden the hand of the Lord came upon him and he was no longer a human being. And the Bible says 
the rope was like flask. Come live in me Oh my life Take over Come live in me And I will rise On you Sing it one more time Come live in me all my life. Take over. over. Come breathe in me, and I will rise. From glory to glory. That's how you rise. When you allow the anointing of the Spirit to open you up to the dimension where you are a flight eagle. From glory to glory. And now forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you And I'll forever be chasing after you I'll be chasing after you So tonight is an admonition He said I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these things Although ye already know them and I established in this present truth. It says, No man that warreth entangles himself with civilian affairs. The Bible says, Meditate on these things. Give yourself only to them that your profiting will appear unto all. We're going to pray. Listen. Listen. There are many teachings that have come that can minister to every area of your life that you desire growth and these messages are all free from finances to your relationship with the holy spirit to understanding the kingdom to marriage to success to greatness to faith you can access the resources and stay there stay in the presence until something breaks open. Rise up on your feet and we're going to pray. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Oh. Come on, give him praise. The truths you are hearing will make you mighty. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Come on, celebrate His Majesty. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to You. All the glory belongs to You, oh God. Hallelujah. Three prayer points, and we are done for the night. Please help that lady. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Prayer point number one. We are going to pray and say, Father, cause your word to prevail. Listen, listen, listen. Until your convictions about the reality of the word transcends that which you see, you cannot produce faith. I've told you, this nonsense that is taught about faith is not the way faith works. Faith does not just work by jacking yourself into nonsense. Faith is a derivative of the depth of your conviction about the reality of God and his word and it's entirely a product of revelation lift your voice and say Lord strengthen my conviction about spiritual things lift your voice and pray Shekabababababa Sembrapakatalababa 
Zekata prakata balada da bos, monto prosko pore ke la bashiba, prakata da bakato proto koto balada ba. Strengthen my conviction, strengthen my conviction about the reality of your word, the reality of your power, the reality of the anointing, the reality of your principles, the immutability of your counsel. Let my convictions be strengthened. They that know their God, they that know their God, they that have experienced Him shall be strong, empowered with might, and He said they will do exploits. Katana parete kete, nanta proto koko soto. They that know they are God. Oh yes, pray. When your conviction becomes strong, you will do exploits in ministry. You will do exploits on your job. You will do exploits in business. You will do exploits in leadership. You will take the mountains and confront the gates and stamp upon the gates of the enemy. Strengthen my convictions. Where my convictions are shaky, strengthen my conviction. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. The dimension of the glory and the power of God that is released in your life is dependent on the strength of your conviction about spiritual realities. Hallelujah. When you realize, it's not enough to know that the spirit of the Christ lives in you. Do you know the implication of what that means? It's not enough to know that you are a success. Do you know the implication? Strengthen my convictions. Strengthen my convictions. You are going to pray. Mention the areas of your life where you are not yet convicted, where the word of God has not gained ground, and say, Lord, help me. Lift up your voice and pray. For some of us, it's in the area of finance. Some of us, it's in the area of marriage. Some of us, it's in the area of our strength. Some of us, it's in the area of your job. Lift up your voice and pray. Strengthen my conviction. Deepen my roots. Deepen my roots. Let me understand the system of the kingdom. Shekete ba 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 ba. Rakata prate kosko ba. Man protosko bende keta. Shekete ba na na ba. Em prata kata ba 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 ba. Are you praying inside and outside? Pray. Shekapa ba ba koso to pokota. Rakata ba ne kete prende kete bende ne bosh. Strengthen my conviction. The Bible says, Be unshakable, be immovable, be steadfast. Be unshakable, be immovable. Hallelujah. 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 I'm tired of guesswork in the spirit. Anoint my eyes tonight. Bring me into an accurate comprehension of the laws of the spirit, the laws of the kingdom. Pray, Lord, anoint my eyes. This trouble that is going on in my family, teach me how to solve that problem. Teach me so that any day I see that problem, I know what to do. He said, The men of Issachar they had an understanding of the times, they knew what to do. He said Jesus himself knew what to do. Let 
When you know what to do, you will not just receive miracles, you will become the miracle worker. Come on, pray. Lord, I need to know what to do concerning my finances. I need to know what to do concerning my marriage. I need to know what to do to keep the heavens open I need to know what to do to keep growing in the anointing I need to know what to do to accurately understand the world I need to know what to do to remain in hell I need to know what to do the spirit of revelation hallelujah Hallelujah. Listen to me. Let me tell you something that will surprise you. Look at me. Time does not change anything. It is revelation that changes things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Time does not have the ability to change things. Time only becomes useful if you incorporate it into the current revelation of what you are having. Oh, one day I know God will do something. I know my God. Let me tell you something. If you know what to do, and it is time that is bringing it to manifest, then you can rejoice. But if you are not doing anything, and you are only hoping, you will wait forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will wait forever. 38 years, he was at Bethesda, the pool there. But within minutes, that man became whole. Is that true? You are going to pray and say, Lord, today I set the time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Today, since time is not a factor in the spirit, that means this night is my own time. Lift your voice and pray. Partake that topa kata. Give us this day, not tomorrow. Give us this day. Give us this day. Give us this day. That change of genotype. Lord, bring it tonight. That HIV virus. Let it die tonight. That joblessness. Let it die tonight. That upliftment in your ministry, let it come tonight. That apostolic fire, that prophetic fire, let it be tonight. That new level of grace and authority in the spirit, let it be tonight. Zinanda dianta, repata tata pregadiando, linga tasta parianta, linga bodianga bona, esta diando sedidia, mamma Something will happen in your life this night that you will not forget. In a long time i'm prophesying to you something will happen in your life this night that you will not forget in a long time hallelujah matthew 4 please sit down for a while There are people standing outside. Please let there not be any vacant seat. If there is a vacant seat, call them in. There are people standing. God will bless you. Wherever you are, God will visit you. Please, let, let's not have any vacant seat. Please, ushers, let all the seats be filled. There's no reason why there should be vacant seats. Well, there are people standing outside. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome everyone to our August miracle service. We give God all the glory. Hallelujah. My prayer all the time 
is that you do not become too familiar with the things that God is doing because he's not always doing the same thing hallelujah let it not be like Jacob that the Lord was in this place I want you to know that tremendous amount of prayer and spiritual preparation goes in for every meeting and much more the miracle service are you hearing me God is not a joker he will not bring you here to play jamboree with you he said he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain I know that there is a God and I know he will do wonders this night Matthew chapter 4 very quickly I welcome everyone there's so many people coming from different places hallelujah salute you I celebrate you when I was coming in I saw a number of men of God outside God bless you hallelujah Matthew 4 Matthew 4 My spirit is fired up this night Verse 23 Matthew 4 verse 23 and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases. Listen, please diverse diseases and torments and those who were possessed or oppressed with demons and those who had epilepsy and those who had the palsy and he healed them and there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and beyond the Jordan there are many of us who have come from different parts of this city and different states in this country the Bible says when they all came to Jesus not to a man of God he healed them all I want you to know that the Lord Jesus is in this place are you hearing me the Lord Jesus Christ is in this place and by the grace of God God has given us an anointing he says son of man prophesy to the dry bones when he prophesied, he didn't say, hear ye the word of Ezekiel. He said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the one who sent me to prophesy. So tonight you will hear the word of the Lord. And faith comes by hearing. Listen to me, please. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. The hearing comes by the word of God. When you hear the word of God, you get up. And you take action until you have taken action you have not taken any step of faith are you hearing what I'm saying faith is just it's not just about confession faith is about taking action every time you do not take action it's a sign that you are still doubting is that true Bishop Oedeko said if it is truly the Word of God if it is faith it will move you into action if that word does not move you into action hallelujah then it means it was not faith so you cannot move your leg and the word of God comes you receive it prove that you have received it by taking action and Peter held on to his hands and lifted him and the man leaping stood his bones and ankles regained strength Take away your eyes from whatever problems. Please, if you've not written your prayer request while you're sitting down, just write it quickly. We have to be very brief this night and be out of here. Praise the Lord. So I want you to believe that you are in the presence of the living God. 
God will not bring you to waste your time. Realize that it is within his ability to heal you. Do you believe that? It is within his ability to change your story. It's within his ability to anoint you. There are many of us who have stayed at certain levels of grace for a long time. It's time to move forward. The Bible says, ye have tarried around this mountain long enough. Turn ye not words. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that you desire. The Bible says, and whatsoever things ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest it and thou will have it. So tonight, you are the one that knows the problem. Don't wait for your neighbor to receive for you. As the word of the Lord begins to come, don't wait until your case is called. The calling of the cases of people is just sign, a sign and a wonder. The Bible says Jesus was in the room teaching and the power of God was present to heal. Just like the glory and the power of God is present this night to heal, to deliver. There are many of you, you have been oppressed by all kinds of demonic spirits. You want to move forward. There are strongholds keeping you down. There are strongholds. Hear me, please. Keeping many families down. You do everything you know to do. And there's no advancement. Everybody, every lady in the family, no marriage. Pretty lady, no marriage. It's not like you live the promiscuous life. That devil will bow this night. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are some of you, no job. Everybody in your family. You went to school, suffered for years, nothing to show forth for it. Acts 10 38. He said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible says he went about doing good and healing. It didn't say those who were sick, healing all they that were oppressed. Sickness is an oppression. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That terminal disease is an oppression. Tonight, don't give excuse for anything. It's not your sickness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not your HIV. Yes, you have medical reports. But whose report will you believe tonight? That's the question. Whose report will you believe? Whose report? make up your mind some of you they have concluded about you as you are here right now scattered in this crowd inside and outside there are many of you everybody has concluded about you they said just forget this guy or forget this lady the person is a useless person but the bible says there is hope for a tree even if it be cut down at the scent of water let me tell you something Many of you, because of certain things you have done, like Samson, your hair has been cut. This is the place tonight that that hair will grow back. He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies, for though I fall, yet will I rise again. Are you listening to me? This is the place, the Bible says, son of man, what seest thou? He said, four horns. These horns that have lifted up themselves so that no one will lift up his head in Judah. He said, but I will send carpenters. Carpenters. Hallelujah. There are many of you pronouncements and ordinances of wicked men have been decreed over your family that nothing good will come out of your life and nothing good will come out of your family. The Bible says, who shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not decreed? Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many of us victims of all kinds of satanic assaults. Ordinances and covenants of darkness that have been entered. And many of us are suffering things we have no idea of. But the Bible says the children shall not suffer the iniquity of their fathers. Tonight, God will visit you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God will visit you. Uh, some of you here you are tired struggling like my brother shared with all kinds of habits 
You are a man of God, great woman of God. But pornography will not live your life. You have, you have fasted, you have prayed. As you are fasting, the devil is still mocking you. Hallelujah. You are still fasting. You are breaking the fast with sleeping with somebody. You are, it's not like you are bad. That devil is a liar this night. Because the hand of the Lord will be strong upon you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are some of you, everything you lay your hands to do doesn't work. It will keep working for others till it gets to your turn. Make sure as you are receiving tonight, hear me, every one of us is representing at least a family. Are you listening to me? He said, as for me and my house, they didn't call all of them one by one. Somebody stood in the gap. As for me, that terminal disease eating your father, or your mother, he can bow this night. Can bow. Because the Bible says, wherefore God has so highly exalted him. He said, and given him a name that is above every other name. That at the mention of that name, what will happen? How many knees? How many knees? Help me. How many knees? HIV, cancer, every knee must bow. The knee that will not bow this night has not been created are you hearing me the bible says blotting out every handwriting question where was the handwriting written there are handwritings ordinances of darkness nothing happens to you until you get to a certain age suddenly some things begin to happen some of you as you are sitting looking at me and hearing me outside you are being molested by all kinds of things you are sleeping in the night. All kinds of devilish things oppressing you. You are afraid. Nobody knows. See, this night, let me tell you, just humble yourself and open up your spirit. Are you hearing me? Keep your whatever it is and say, Lord, do something in my life this night. Hallelujah. Demonic things. The devil and his assaults joining the heads of people playing with people's destinies there are many of you you and your you know this you and your you are perpetually living under a close heaven but this is why the lord brought you tonight the name miracle service we would have called it worship service miracle service was given by god are you hearing me it was just it was not just a name that was formulated it's a miracle service and your faith your faith is that connecting pipe to the power of god kenny said something was it kenny or, or, or pastor jakes now that said something very powerful he said make sure that this night you are not watching other people some of you like watching other people some of you even came because of what you had. Some of you are critics. You just came to verify a lot of things. Some of you came with a sincere desire. Some of you came sluggishly because you like a lady. And she said, I'm going for koinonia. I said, talk. Love does everything. Let me tell you something. Redefine your priority this night. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you are coming as usual. Some of you are coming because you are workers. He said, he that cometh unto him must be first that he exists and then that is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him i came here with an open heart i began to tell the lord from home i said lord i'm the first person the bible says the husband man shall be the first partaker and so i told the lord before you begin to touch the people i'm not being selfish hallelujah don't stand watching people and say why are they praying like this why are they jumping like this and celebrating god you can get up we will share the grace and you will go back you will be watching this is this is the reason why a lot of people think miracles are fake because they have never gotten one every time people are open say how can a beautiful sister like this be rolling on the ground praying and say god visit me you are carrying your dignified self and god will pass you and touch somebody and then at the end of it, you see people celebrating miracles and breakthroughs. Testimonies coming and you say it's not true. 
Why is it that there are only specific people? This thing is stage managed. If you open up your heart, that's what God told Cain. Cain was complaining why Abel was receiving breakthroughs and he was not receiving. God said, if you do what Cain did, will your sacrifice not be accepted? Participate in the meeting this night. Follow instructions diligently. When they say lift up your hands and say amen, don't say please, this lifting up of hands, this is the problem. Say my story must change this night. Say it from your heart, my story must change this night. Say Lord, I know you are alive. I know you are powerful. I know you are able to visit my life Visit the works of my hands. Visit my health. Visit my family. And this night, I place a demand by faith that I will truly receive. Can I tell you something? If your heart is not open to receive, it's better to go home. You can do something meaningful with your time. You can go and read the Bible or do something else. But I advise you this night, don't be among the spectators. If you don't have an expectation, carefully think about it. There's no crime not having one. But get one. So that you are not in confusion. The Bible said, give us this day our... It didn't say, give us this day what we need. That's too ambiguous. Give us when? Specific time, specific need. Our what? That's what he wanted. Daily bread. So Lord, give me this day, this change of genotype. Give me this day a change of result. Give me this day a story. Lift my head, oh God. Let somebody know that a giant can arise from your family. There are some of you like Gideon. You are, your family is the least. And you are the least in your family. And you are busy hiding. This night the Lord is speaking to you. What are you doing on the ground, almighty oh man of valor? Do you not know who you are in Christ? Redemption offers us an opportunity to rise and reign like kings. Are you hearing me? He said, awake thou that sleepest and Christ will give you light. Awake. As that reign of glory comes, some of you, what you need tonight is an upgrade of grace. The grace you have is there, but you have gotten to the limit of it. There are certain dimensions. Hear me, let me tell you something. See, grace is in levels. The Bible says he measured a thousand cubits. Is that true? Measured another thousand cubits. Those will open to you according to the degree of grace. Let me tell you the truth. It's not everything that is possible for everybody. Are you hearing me? I told you we are all equal in Christ, but we are not equal in grace. The prophet's servant took the rod the same rod went and laid it on the dead body. Nothing happened. Is that true? But the prophet came and did it. See, that it is not possible for you does not mean it's not possible in Christ. But tonight, Jesus himself, the Bible says, and if I be lifted up, tonight we have exalted him with all the worship. Christ is lifted up. You cannot come to his presence and those chains and shackles and they bound something some of us have been bound by limitations by mindsets the bible says but the hand of the lord came upon something and that rope became like wax like wax many of you will shake out of some things this night some of you have been thrown into the den of the lion and people have forgotten about you but can I tell you something? Your enemies will call your name and you will answer. You will say, I'm alive. I got into that dungeon. But before then, that Shekinah of God that preserves men, you will come out strong, come out wise, come out powerful, come out full of grace and tell them, I have a testimony. I know what it means to go to the valley of the shadow of death. But God, who can take a man from a dung hill the bible says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon tonight many of you will activate breakthroughs 
God will connect you. Let me tell you something. Listen to me. The Holy Ghost gave me a revelation some time ago. He said, God is called the Father of Spirits. Have you ever known the meaning of that name? That means every spirit is subject to him. When the disciples came in Luke, in the book of Luke, they said, they came rejoicing, saying, Master, even the demons were subject to us through thy name. And Jesus said, do not just rejoice because the spirits. So he's called the father. Are you listening to me? The chief, the captain above every spirit, including the spirit of your destiny helpers. And so if the father of spirits moves, he can move any spirit. Hear me. The Bible says Nebuchadnezzar did not sleep that night. He got up by himself. He said, oh Daniel, has your God been able to save you? May my God reveal himself as the father of spirits over certain families. The father of spirits. Every spirit. Listen. Habalists understand this principle. They can enter their coven. There's what they call summoning the spirits of people. Is that true? While they are sleeping, they summon your spirit. And the spirit of the person comes to the coven. They are trying to mimic God. God is the lion. Satan roars like the lion. Tonight, God will summon the spirits of men. Let me tell you the truth. And compel them to bless you. Hallelujah. He said, look up to Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah that bare thee. For I called him out alone. I blessed him and I increased him. I called him alone. This night is not you and your neighbor. I know you are going out together. Just leave that thing for a while now. Are you hearing me? It's not the issue of me and my neighbor or me and my family members. Oh, oh this guy is our neighbor in New Extension. Forget about that thing. I know mother came with father. Brother, forget about that thing and say, Lord, I will not let you go. I will not let you go. I will not let you go until something in my spirit breaks open. I will not let you go. I will not let you go. I'm provoking you to get angry tonight. Because what you are about to lift. Listen. When you watch weightlifters as they lift weights. Before they lift it, you see them shouting. They are getting themselves angry. Well, because when they are angry, an ability they cannot explain comes. This is what I'm doing to you. When I fire your faith, every unbelief that came with your situation, I know you trekked from town to come here, but can I tell you something? God is able to change the story of a man. Tonight, let's see that demonic report that says you will not bear a child. Let's see that demonic report that says you have fibroid and that you will be pregnant. Let me tell you the truth. My Bible tells me God opened the womb of Leah. God opened the womb of Rachel. It is God that opens a door that no devil can shut. And he can shut a door that no devil can open. Revelation 3 verse 8. He said, Behold, I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word. He said, Behold, I set before you. I set before you. Hallelujah. We had a very touching testimony over the week of the favor of God. Hallelujah. Someone called us and a very professional web designer from Gombe State is the one that he designs for state governments, their websites. And he just called us. He said koinonia messages have been blessing him, opening him to dimensions in the spirit. 
he said he has been stepping into new levels in his career and he said please i want to transport myself foot my bill lodge myself and come and build a free website for the ministry and i want to train the media team on how to maintain it everything free of charge how can you explain this see listen listen i don't say this thing see let me tell you something we tell testimonies because the testimony of jesus that means a testimony that was initiated by the spirit of the christ is a spirit of prophecy meaning it has in itself the ability to compel you to desire it and see it happen in your life hallelujah the testimony of jesus the spirit of prophecy don't sit down there and say can it happen you are seeing what God, you cannot belong to a ministry that is carrying certain levels of grace and is not working in your life. Get angry this night. Get angry. He said, I and all the children that the Lord has given me, get angry. When they saw the apostle, they said he had been with Jesus. See, listen, let me tell you this night don't you ever hear me don't you just leave him leave him don't you ever are you hearing me try to make satan make you think there is no hope that language of there is no hope is of the devil some of you are outside hear my voice because there are many voices speaking there are some voices telling you you will never marry ladies hear me some are saying because you live the past life look at how it is in your house what is your business with what has happened to mr abc the bible says a thousand shall fall by your side is that true they fell near you he said another ten thousand by your right side he said none shall harm you some of you hear me this night i'm serious about this marriage thing we are going to break this devilish yoke some of you have been laughing about it if you don't take it serious this night you will be surprised you are just saying i'm fine i'm fine don't get up and deal with it this night. The Bible says, the whole world lieth in wickedness. Don't let cartoons fool you. This world is not a playground. Are you hearing me? So when it's time to receive, make sure you receive. And the Lord is going to be restoring in this place. You lived a past life. You lost your womb. Who told you God has stopped creating? Read the book of Revelation. He said, for thou was slain. And you have received all things. He said, you have created. He said, they, they are and were created. They were created and are still being created. God did not stop creation. He only rested on the seventh day. When he rested on the seventh day, there was no need for recreation. When man spoiled things, he sent Jesus back. Let me tell you something. Remember not the former things. Are you hearing me? Tonight, don't let the devil say, even you, even you, that everybody knows you in your area to be a prostitute. So what? See, this is why when they came to the land of Jericho, because of the prophetic destiny, are you hearing me, of Rahab, he said kill everything plus the animals so that there will be no trace to her history because she was going to be the great grandmother of jesus he said destroy everything of the past tonight let me tell you something everything whether your mistakes whether your carelessness of the past the bible says remember not the former things how many of us are ready to receive tonight let me give you a few seconds right now i'd like you to think on the things you want god to do for you please don't be mechanical about this we are not doing jamboree this night think very well know what you want god to do if his husband say husband don't say a man if his wife say wife if his breakthrough say lord my heavens are short If it's finances, say finances. If it's your ministry that is dying, no growth, say, oh God, measure a thousand cubits this night. Any area of your life, terminal disease, infections, 
lump in your breast, cancer, whatever it is, just believe God. Don't say we have been coming. I came the last time I didn't receive. Master, we have toiled all night, they said. He said, nevertheless, this night, at thy word. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Go ahead and pray in tongues just for one minute. Exercise your spirit, man. Outside. I'm telling you, I see a cloud outside. A mighty cloud. A mighty cloud. The Lord is showing me a silvery cloud outside. God will do mighty things outside. Pray in one minute. Cry out your expectation to God. Go ahead. Forget about your neighbor. Talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, you know that you are my last hope this night. You are my last hope in this place. If you do not help me, there is no help again. If you do not save my family, if you don't change our story, then let it be that there is no God. But I have no option again. Pray that demon spirit assaulting your destiny. Pray enough is enough. That yoke of bad luck. Pray Christ has redeemed you by faith tonight. You will enter into the experience. Christ has paid the price. You don't need to pay it again. But it takes faith to enforce that which Christ has done. The price has been paid. It will not be paid this night. That ultimate price. Yes, Lord. just a song listen to what you are saying listen to what you are saying everybody inside and outside I truly hail you most high I hail you most high I truly hail hail you Hallelujah. Hear me. The power of God is present in this place mighty. And God is going to be fishing out people and families. Hear me. Some of you will stand in for your family. 
every yoke of darkness every curse every the power of God is already moving every curse outside I want you to get ready because there will be a release of fire hallelujah at the count of three hear me inside and outside at the count of three with all your heart you're going to shout Jesus hear me the fire of the Holy Ghost is going to be moving in this place in a dramatic way especially outside there will be mighty deliverances for you for your family members every oppression it will bow tonight because upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance lift up your hands thank you father take over this meeting right now Holy Spirit take over this meeting take over this meeting do mighty things I give you all the glory at the count of three hear me I confront gates I confront powers in the name that is above all names out of the abundance of grace that is sufficient in this house at the count of three every devil I speak from the realm of the spirit and I confront altars by the fire of the Holy Ghost you will bow at the count of three one two three shout Jesus that devil of darkness come out let God's people go free outside the fire of the Holy Ghost bring them out bring them out every act of witchcraft every act of divination every act of sorcery let the fire fall I expose every power of darkness right now right now right now outside outside there are angels of deliverance in a mighty way bring them out Outside, outside, there is a baptism of fire. No devil, no devil of darkness will stand tonight. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Don't put on the tetter. Oh, there is fire in this place. No devil can stand. No devil against your destiny. No enchantment. No divination against Jacob shall stand. Surely they shall gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, this night they will scatter. So Hallelujah. Lift up your hands again. Outside. Hallelujah. Hear me. Those of you outside, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. God is not done with you. Please pick them and bring them. Many of it will be a mass deliverance. Are you hearing me? Just those outside. Right now at the count of three. One, two, three. Shetetetetetetekapa. Reketepototopa. Is the name above all names. 
Yokes are breaking. Spells are breaking. Yokes are breaking. Yokes are breaking. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Outside, outside, angels are still moving. Outside, it's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right at the back, right to the back. Lord, let no devil, let no devil stand your presence. Shake your temper, cut your prata, banana, the bucket. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. It's the baptism of fire. No devil will stand where in the presence of the Lord. Hear me. Hear me. Some of you are receiving liberty. You don't have to fall and come out. Are you hearing me? But they are just living. Living. See, some of you be checking. We have not prayed for the sick yet. But be checking yourself. You will find out that miracles are already happening. Because some of these sicknesses are orchestrated by devils. Now, Hear me, the Lord Jesus Christ is in this place. At the count of three, I speak to all these demons that have oppressed these people as a point of contact. I speak as an ambassador. At the count of three, you will leave them complete deliverance. No hiding. Let the word of God search even to the dividing of the soul and the spirit. There be no hiding place. At the count of three, under this apostolic fire at the count of three you will go right now one two three go 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 come out come out come out and return no more come out come out come out and return no more. Come out. Come out. There's no hiding place. Come out. There's fire upon every devil. Fire. Shake it. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. There's no hiding place. There's no hiding place. There's no hiding place.
listen as this is happening to you i want you to know that this is happening in your family too are you hearing me this is the spirit of death in this brother's family the spirit of death right now thou foul devil i see you in the spirit go go come out now come out now out Let me pray for this lady. See, I'm seeing horns. Horns. This is what I'm seeing. That devil is a liar. Right now, I make contact with your body by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out of her right now. You're a wicked, foul devil of darkness. Just lay your hands on her head. In the name of Jesus. Now, come out, thou devil of darkness. There's no hiding for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, this curse of darkness is gone from this lady. Hallelujah. Ulcer. If you have ulcer, lift your hands. Anybody? Ulcer. Please, you're going to be healed now. Check yourself. Hallelujah. Now, we'll take some instant testimonies. Hallelujah. We'll take some instant testimonies. Because of time, we usually don't do that. But we'll just to encourage a few people. Lift your hands inside and outside. You're suffering from peptic ulcer. It will go now. Peptic ulcer. Lift your hands as I rebuke that spirit. Some of you have wounds. Those wounds will close up now. Now, not later on. Just leave them. God is not done with them until he's done. Brother, look at me. You're a great man, but let me tell you, you didn't come out for yourself. You came out for your family. Where are you from? Uh -uh, not where you're coming from. Edo State. Edo State. This is what I'm seeing. The Lord is showing me a shrine with seven stones and there's kola knot in the middle. Are you listening to me? So God is setting you free. You believe that? Let me pray for you for your family. Out now! Those altars of darkness be gone forever. Please don't be quick to carry them. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, altars. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That name that is above every other name. Ulcers be healed now. Ulcers be healed now. Ulcers inside and outside be healed now. Start checking yourself. Check yourself. Miracles are happening. God is healing ulcer. Ulcer. Check. Check. The moment you see a notable miracle, um, maybe we'll have a few, I don't know, maybe at the back, one or two people. The ministers who verify them will take one or two testimonies. The Lord is showing me who is Hanatu. Hanatu, Hanatu. I'm hearing the name Hanatu. Come now, don't wait there, please. There's no time. Hanatu. Hanatu. God is visiting the family of Hanatu. You are Hanatu. Your name is Hanatu. You. Look at me. God is visiting your family. Are you hearing me? A devil of darkness spell and yokes of bondage let our family go now in the name of Jesus Christ God is not just delivering the family God is anointing this young man God will do mighty things take the anointing you will become a mighty man of God mighty man of God hallelujah sister this lady come please quickly open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain I'm hearing the name grace look at me who is grace 
I'm hearing a name, Grace. Your friend, your church member. We need to pray for Grace because death wants to take her life. Are you hearing me? Grace, that's, I'm just flowing as the Holy Spirit is helping me. But then the Lord is going to visit you in three things. See, listen to me. Number one, I, the Lord always shows me these things because I'm seeing marital issue. I, no, sir. You married? Do you know me? Have I met with you? The Lord wants to solve that issue right now because you're looking pretty on the outside. Are you hearing me? But I'm seeing shadow. That's the only thing I'm seeing as your face in the spirit. There is no form, just shadow. But the Lord is going to set you free. Number two, who is doing a building project? Me. A building. Did you tell me this is the second thing God is going to do? Supernatural grace to complete the building project. Are you listening to me? Number three, God is blessing you in the area of business. I'm hearing business. Who does business? Yes, I do business. Are you sure? Don't just say yes. So are you very sure? Shoes and bags. Okay, you are going to see an escalation in your business. Three th these three things. Hold my hands. Father, that yoke of bondage, I break her free from it right now. Ah, what is this thing that I'm seeing again? Do you know what I'm seeing? I'm not seeing a woman, I'm seeing a man. See, don't feel embarrassed. Who comes to oppress you in the night? You have those kind of experiences. This is the man I'm seeing. That devil is a liar. Are you hearing me? Let her go. She must be free by the power of the Holy Ghost. This is what is stopping this marriage. I set you free. You will experience the hand of God, the grace of God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Petrus, your son name is Petrus. Your son name is Petrus. Petrus, your son name is Petrus. Please, let's hurry up. Your son name is Petrus. When you have that person, please let him come out. Hallelujah. Now, if you have problem with your ears, please, we have to be fast. Ears, whether one side or if you came with anybody inside and outside, you came with anybody that is partially or completely deaf, please put your hands there right now. Put your hands right there. Some of you feel like water in your ears. Just put your hands. Please, as you're receiving miracles, some of you, I'm not mentioning your case. Just walk out, Bishop Stan and Pastor Jakes are outside. Take the courage to walk out now. Go and drop your testimony. Hallelujah. We're going to take one or two of them. The ministers are at the back. Hallelujah. They are standing. Even if the miracle has started, they'll perfect it. Look at me. Come. See. Brother, come. Where were you sitting? Outside. At the back. Hold on. What happened to you? Coming here for like very well, but I've not felt anything. So I opened up my heart. And what happened? What happened? That's the question. Body vibrating. Right? See, the Lord Jesus, because even now God has not finished. One of the things God is calling you, it will be a time of preparation, but God is calling you. You're going to be a great teacher of the word. Are you hearing me? He will teach the word very prophetically. Look at my eyes. Just look at my eyes. Spirit of revelation. My God, I pray. The eye is the light of the body. Let something happen to this brother. Let there be a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. I impart upon you. Just look at my eyes. You're receiving a mighty impartation. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please go outside. God is visiting people. I'm seeing some, someone healed. Lump in the breast. Lump in the breast is getting healed right now. Right now. The moment it is your case, celebrate God. Check it and go out. Celebrate it. There's nothing to be ashamed of. This is, this is a outside. A lady is healed. Lump in the breast. Your right breast. Outside. There's healing going on right now. A lump in the breast. Outside. A lady is being healed lump in the breast is going hallelujah now 
blood disease blood disease i want to pray for blood disease whether hepatitis hepatitis is killing people like chickens right now whether it is hepatitis hiv aside from genotypes we'll pray for genotypes differently hallelujah but any other blood disease please lift your hands quickly quickly please lift your hands want to rebuke that devil thank you jesus thank you jesus if you're lifting your hands lift it because the power of god will come upon you right now in the name of jesus i pray blood disease be healed be healed right now inside and outside be healed hiv virus die now in the name of jesus sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia die right now please can we get another mic hallelujah okay let's just take one hallelujah so sir um this lady had been suffering from asthma for a long time and also oh, sorry for a long time and she said she couldn't shout and in fact right now she's lost her voice hallelujah because god healed her wife standing outside the moment man of god said that people with ulcer god is touching them right now god touched and she was healed she began to shout and she's lost her voice hallelujah can you shout for us shout. praise the lord Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, as more miracles are happening, don't just come out here to testify, please. Now, I want to pray for a woman. You came, you have pains. It's, it's an elderly woman. Something, I don't know if it's a growth or something. Please, who is that? Please and please, let's save time. God is healing people right now. And then I'm seeing, watch this, this part. You're feeling, sometimes you walk and it's almost like you want to fall. Your bone here, come out. You're a lady. You're a lady. God is showing me. The lady is holding a baby. This is what I'm seeing. You are holding a baby. Whether it's your child. Who is that, please? Holding a baby, oh. You are holding a baby. Where is the baby? Was she holding a baby? Because, come. Open the floodgates of heaven. Where is, where is the pain? This is the baby. This is a baby. Come, madam. You will be healed right now. Look at me. You, you can see her limping. Who can see her limping? Can you see her limping? Can you see her limping? Madam, hold my hands. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Lay your hands on her. Which of them? Which of them? Where's the pain? What happened? Just like that. That devil will leave you right now. Because there is a name. Lord Jesus, thank you. Amen. Come match your legs go ahead go ahead match look at look at this look at this look at this is there any pain are you feeling any pain just a little go ahead just match in the name of jesus christ now check it walk walk and come walk and come jump look at look at this give jesus a shout of praise open the heavens let it rain ministering to me just leave her five months you are a lady here you have not seen your period for five months five months you have not seen your period you've shared it with a few friends right now this night this night i know there are lady ushers they'll help you hallelujah all kinds of menstrual issues it will disappear it will disappear right now open the floodgates of heaven as soon as i pray for you 
take her to the restroom you will check yourself right now right now that yoke of bondage be free now by the power of the holy ghost there's the fire of the holy ghost please take her please take her so she doesn't feel embarrassed she's not the only one there will be miracles there are more miracles coming celebrate jesus christ please can we have another mic so that pastor jakes is there another mic okay it's here please just go to the back go to the back yes hallelujah this brother's name is dennis 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 and while standing here when the man of god said she lift up her hands and those that had ulcers she lift up your hands god is healing ulcer they actually had ulcer and it translated into asthma hallelujah and while lifting up his hands what happened praise the lord this is my first time to come here and it led to asthmatic hallelujah as the man of god says like if you have as uh, if you have ulcer and i believe he's going to he's going to be healed and as i lift up my hand i'm having chest chest pain hallelujah but now i'm not feeling anything it's just as cool as breathe as breathe as in and out breathe in and out go hallelujah. ahead breathe in and out breathe in and out in and out any problem no celebrate problem. jesus hallelujah my grain headache has just been healed my grain headache has been healed now my grain headache please check yourself my grain headache my grain headache has been healed make sure you just rush down to the back my grain headache thank you jesus christ my grain headache has been healed now please listen there's someone you wake up in the morning your heart area here your heart area pains you it's as if your heart is tearing when you wake up early in the morning this thing has been happening for a long time who is that person your heart just just this way you cannot even sleep on that side because when you rest on that side you have serious problem this is not the only one i'm seeing a lady you're a young lady you're a young lady Open the floor gates. Mama, do, does she understand English? Who brought her? Mama? Okay. What? Selena is a official Hausa interpreter. Ask her what's wrong with her. Make it down, Mama. Her hand and her legs. Her hand. Everything. This is C. The devil once is supposed to be from my head down. This is stroke. Are you seeing? This is stroke that the devil wants to bring. Tell her right now she will, she's going to be healed and she will dance. Miracles. Look at the lady who just came. Hallelujah. You need to celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While standing here worshiping God, she said she's had menstrual pain for a long, long time. Hallelujah. The pain had been there and while Apostle ministered to her, something remarkable happened. You want to hear? Hallelujah. Please, we need a lady to touch her stomach. She said before she were pains, so we need somebody to verify. Now the pains are gone. Yes. The pains are gone. Yes. Right. Any pain? Hallelujah. Please celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Check yourself. Don't just stand waiting. Check yourself. God is doing miracles. Even if you're outside, just Bishop and Pastor Jakes are at the back. Mama, tell her. God is going to heal her right now. Ask her, does she believe? Tell her to hold my hands. The Lord Jesus sets you free. That devil, gone. Pain, gone. Come up. Tell her to come up and march. It's gone. It's gone. Look at this. It's gone. It's gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it How does she feel? Is this still is the pain still there? She's not feeling any pain. Mama, let's match. Can you dance? Play any song for her. 
Look at, look at somebody who could not stand well. What kind of song do they sing? You, you people should learn Alsa songs for our mothers. You people don't know one Alsa song. Annie, give us one Alsa song. Come on, dance, celebrate Jesus. outside a hole in the teeth has been closed outside a hole in the teeth check yourself a hole in the teeth a hole in the teeth it has been paining you check you find out it has is gone right now right now the lord is showing me a hole in the teeth is closed the hole is closed completely please make sure you verify before coming okay Okay, repaint. It's my heart. Each and every moment when I wake up in the morning, it's like it shifts and it aches really for a while now. While this moment, while I was standing right here, when this woman just received her healing, I felt it just happened immediately. Praise the Lord. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Please, if you are healed, just walk right at the back. The Lord is showing me another miracle one eye the left eye of somebody outside god is really visiting people outside the left eye you don't see well with it there's you see like an image intercepting your eye is gone right now please check it what was she okay lay your hands there thank you jesus for your healing power gone check yourself See, the anointing does not just come check yourself please don't don't feel embarrassed to say you have to say yes no if it doesn't happen say it we'll pray for you here check yourself check yourself very well do what you couldn't do can you any pain i'm still waiting for the lady someone the, i think the did i say left or right now breast lump breast lump is gone is gone check it don't don't wait check check and go outside pastor jakes is there they are busy verifying people's cases inside or outside hallelujah praise the lord now um this is very interesting there's a family here that has been suffering delay and god is going to solve the problem in a very dramatic way wait 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 listen the power of God is going to carry the person from where he is. The person will run out here with such speed. This is a sign that this is what God is doing. Hallelujah. This is what the sign that God gave me. This is very interesting. The way the Holy Spirit walks, sign and wonders here. From outside, from outside, the power of God will pick the person. He will run with the spirit of Elijah. It's from outside. Lord, let it happen according to your word. I give you praise and I give you glory. You will come out under a tremendous influence of the spirit. It's a sign that this is what God is doing. 
please let's continue before the person comes out you will come out certainly this is the word of the lord now i'm seeing a baby that is sick you came with a baby that is sick please who is the person the baby cries in the night please hurry up quickly because pastor jakes will still come up here and bishop stand ah whatever mountain will not has not answered to it will answer to you this night who is this this is the baby that is sick what's wrong with her in 2000 open the floodgates of heaven 2003 she was sick so we took her to the hospital and they transfused her after them she was one more person again this same experience for one more person outside one more person outside is going to happen again one more person by the power and the influence of the spirit this is a sign and a wonder god is restoring delay in families the power of god will just pick you from the crowd and bring you here with tremendous speed let's listen they transfuse her and after what did they say is wrong with her doctor confirmed that she has HIV. With the transfusion of blood, she has HIV. That's what the doctor confirmed. That what? She's HIV positive. That devil is a liar. Come, my dear. Look at me. What's her name? How can a girl bear the name Favor and still have HIV? You see how demonic Satan is? The Bible says a man was sitting at a beautiful gate with an ugly situation. A lady, this is like Jabez, but tonight, like the prayer of Jabez, he said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Hallelujah. You will go and test her. You will come back with a testimony. We will change it. HIV is a spirit. And it will bow. Sweetheart, hold my hands. Hold my hands, both of your hands. Yeah. Just leave her. Go and test her. She's free. Another mighty miracle. Another mighty miracle. I tell you, God is doing wonders in this place tonight. Listen. Hallelujah. Apostles, this is amazing. Listen. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. The, the word of knowledge you gave about a woman, a lady outside with the with the lump. Lump. The lady with the lump. Listen. How okay, how long has it been? Help us. Mm, for like three. How long? Three years. Right now. It's gone. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Look at me. Lift your hands. Lord, let your power come upon her. You will perfect this right now. That which you have started, let it be perfected in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amazing. Amazing. I'm telling you. God is doing amazing things. So if your miracle has started, Bishop is praying, Jake's are praying. We are very serious. Don't go back. Don't go back. A wrist has just been healed. You feel a pain. In fact, there used to be like a growth. Check it, it has disappeared. Check it right now, it has disappeared. Check it, it has disappeared. Check it. God is doing mighty miracles. Check it, it has disappeared. Hallelujah. Now I'm seeing a woman. There are objects that move in your body. Serious objects. It moves sometimes to your legs. Sometimes to your chest. Hallelujah. Right now as I pray, you are going to be free and you find out that you are free. You are feeling light. Please, when that happens to you, go down. The ministers are seriously praying there. Father, in the name of Jesus, this demonic thing, this demonic thing, this demonic yoke of darkness, 
let it leave your body right now right now right now right now come my sister what's your name Grace. grace when I was speaking to a lady here and I said grace I was my eyes was being fixed are you married we are going to visit marriage issues now just get ready we are going to deal ruthlessly with that devil are you hearing me marriage is a good thing say it again say it one more time every good and perfect gift where does it come from where does it come from that means every bad and imperfect gift comes from where i tell you the truth god is going to visit marriages right now look at me men don't come to you anybody that comes they just mock you they run away they do all of these things some even insult you can i tell you something you are wonderfully and fearfully made i hope you know that god does mighty marriage miracles in this place so when we are talking about marriage look at another miracles are happening like i tell you there is an open heavens and this is what happens once there is praise please make sure the, the mic is set let's take this testimony yes sir come sister hallelujah apostle when you gave a word for the woman you said somebody's something was moving in movement her. in our body yes, exactly She's this person. is the person movement she had an accident some days ago and since then she's been having funny movement movement in, in your body even standing here in the meeting she was still having that any movement right now in your body lay your hands on your on your stomach no not on your stomach not your legs thank you jesus christ Amen, sir. jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus You're free, completely free. Give Jesus a big sister. I'm going to put, look at me. What are you doing? You are a teacher. Yes, sir. Kalokuda. Eh? Kalokuda. Government secondary school. I'm going to pray for you. Why don't they like you? What is all this thing I'm saying? I don't know. Eh? I don't know. Do you know me? Did we discuss this? Because I'm seeing real hatred. They hate this woman. Eh? I'm seeing Chuck. Chuck, you are a teacher. What are you teaching? Okay, you promise me they teach everything. Oh, okay. Let me pray for you. Look at me. That devil is a liar and you should settle down. Do you believe me? This one is oppression or oh, this one is not just let her go that wicked foul devil of darkness let her go now let her go come out of her right now let her go thou devil of darkness release her right now with a mighty shout go go If there is a woman here you've suffered barrenness or a man anything that you have not given but come out here quickly please quickly quickly bishop is still coming and jakes we have to hurry up there's a bit that will happen here please come out quickly you you must be married though except if you are standing for somebody Don't be emotional about it, please, please. Be looking at your neighbor. If you are from the same place, go back. Somebody has come to represent another person. We will have miracle children in this place. Look at, look how many people the devil is stopping them from enjoying. I mean, some of them are standing in for their loved ones. Look at, look at this, look at this. It looks like they are coming out to give offering. But this is, this is lack of, lack of children you see the relevance of meetings like this listen to me who is standing for herself or for himself for yourself 
For yourself, come here, please. Quickly. Those who are standing for others, just wait. For yourself. Look at me. Are you together? She's your wife? Oh, both of you are standing for yourself. Where's your husband? He traveled. I'm seeing a baby girl. Go and write it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I pray for you? Hold my hands. See, let me tell you. Sister, look at me. You will come back here with your baby girl and testify. You believe that? Lord, confirm your word with power right now. Thank you, Jesus. You are set free. Ah! You're on his marriage. Why didn't you wait? The guy just said, okay. No, 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 no. Don't See, don't laugh. It doesn't mean you should do it anyway, but don't laugh. It's coming out. Look at me. You believe that there is supernatural grace for marriage, yeah? When, when are you, when is the wedding? Eh? Hold my hands. According to the time of life, I speak to you under the unction of the spirit. Before the end of this month, you will be in a very godly, serious relationship with a serious lady that is virtuous and love God. Father of spirits, connect them. You are the father of spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Wow, mighty miracles again are happening. You too, you for yourself, lay your hands on your stomach. Come, because I'm seeing something else. What did the doctor say? Whatever that means. Well, we shall know this is not from God, whatever it is. PID, EID, we'll pray, whatever it is. And see, look at me. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name. At least the men don't understand, some of them, but the ladies, you understand what she said, Abi? Do you understand or not? We are going to pray. Look at me. It will go and you will give birth to a lot of children. What will stop you is discipline, not lack of. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I wish your husband were here oh, because he's not only you I'm supposed to pray for. Where is he? Just pray for him. Thank you, Jesus. Just lay your hands there. Father, perfect her. The power of God is coming upon you and that devilish thing is leaving you right now. Return with testimonies. Return with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Please let's hear Pastor Jakes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Apostle, when you give the word for somebody outside that God was feeling the person's teeth. Feeling the person's teeth. How many of you remember? Two this of her teeth. Two of her teeth. Had been removed. Can you open your mouth? Don't feel embarrassed. Two of her teeth has been removed. Look at. Sorry. I, this is bad. Viewers discretion. I'm sorry, don't feel bad. We are disciplined people. But just so that we we'll celebrate God, check, no hole. Look at this. No hole. I can't see any hole here. There was, your teeth was removed. Two teeth. Two teeth was removed. Who knows her? Who knows her? Is it true that the teeth was removed? Who is that? Yes. Yes. It's, it's true. You are sure of that? Dorcas. Her name is Dorcas. Look at, and the teeth has been filled supernaturally give jesus a big Hallelujah. big hand big hand big hand of praise hallelujah now all of you that are standing for any see if you're standing for anybody when you go back send the person a text and say i just stood in for you now believe and receive are you hearing me send them a text don't let them roam around you are here suffering to stand in for them they are not connecting again hallelujah and because you are standing here it's impossible for you to face anything called barrenness i hope you know that the bible says and when job prayed for his friends god turned his own captivity job 42 verse 10 and 11. let me pray for you lift your hands look at as many people lift your hands some of you the power of god will come upon you on behalf of the people there my god children the bible says are a heritage from the lord and Father, you have made this place an apostolic ground in this city where there are tangible proofs 
evidence is that Jesus is alive right now I pray according to the measure of grace every yoke of bondage hear me every curse every fibroid low spam count every devil of darkness that is responsible for impotency or barrenness be lifted now in the name of Jesus be lifted now in the name of Jesus the power of God is coming upon some of you on behalf of your family members I release miracle children. I release miracle children. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. On behalf of those you are standing for, they will come back rejoicing, testifying. Every spirit of darkness responsible for unfruitfulness. If they don't have womb, we create new wombs now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Return back rejoicing. Send them a text that they have been prayed for. And let me tell you, see, listen, hold on, hold on. There are some who take in but lose the child. Is that true? Lift your hands on behalf of them because some is not that they don't take in. They take in one month, two months, they just wake up in the morning and they just see blood. That devil is a liar. Are you hearing me? Tonight is miracle service. My God, I pray. The Bible says the hand of Zerubbabel that started this work, that same hand will perfect it. I pray no more miscarriage. In the name of Jesus, everyone standing here, return with dramatic testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus, please go back rejoicing. God bless you. Pastor Jake's Bishop Stan, please come. Please come. They'll just be ministering to you in a few minutes. Hallelujah. I know that there are areas that they'll minister to you. While that is happening, pass the prayer request, please. This is a time for God to visit your case. Please, as you are passing it, be praying in tongues. As you are passing it, be praying in tongues. Say, Lord, this is it. My time has come. If they didn't call you, your prayer point will call your case now. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir. Pastor Jake, so just minister by the grace of God. And then Bishop Stan, sir. Please write your prayer request quickly. trusting the Lord for and Lord communicates to me for some of you especially God will touch you hmm. God's going to be touching some of you especially what you've desired from him specifically some of you God is going to be activating some anointing upon your life an unusual kind of anointing hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. I'm sensing it being poured on somebody's head. There are people, the Lord will be pouring it upon your head. Parido, fine dan gros tiki van tahi, lingo supra tika tare boste, randa kai. One of you, the anointing will be so heavy on your leg. Heavy, heavy. They will literally have to carry you out of this place. <laughs> they will literally have to carry you out of this place. Blessings, blessings, God is blessing some people. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 
Blessings, God is blessing you. Please, those of you that are serving presently, like leaders in fellowship, just lift up your hands. Specifically, those ones. The Lord wants to reward you. God will touch you. He will reward you. God will reward you right now. Those of you serving, the Lord will reward you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the reward come upon you. Let the reward come upon you. The Lord will reward you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the reward come upon you. Let the reward come upon you in the name of Jesus. The Lord reaches out to you to bless you. The Lord reaches out to you to bless you. The Lord will surprise you. Thank you, Jesus. That person, it's a, is your pancreas. Just lay your hands on your stomach. You've been having unusual stomach pains. Your pancreas. I think pancreas should be in stomach, right? Pancreas, pancreas, pancreas. That's why I hear pancreas. Just lay your hands on your stomach. You've been having that problem. Right now, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release healing. Let healing come to your body. In the name of Jesus, let healing come to your body. Healing come to your body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, healing comes to your body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord is going to be touching some people's eyes, and you begin to have visionary experiences. The Lord's going to be touching. You feel like fire in your eyes as I pray with you right now. You feel like fire in your eyes. The Lord will touch your eyes. The Lord will touch your eyes. You begin to have visionary experiences. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the wind of God touch your eyes. Let the wind of God touch your eyes. The wind of God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the wind of God touches your eyes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. While Apostle was ministering, God told me about somebody amongst us and I don't know, there might be more than one um, the devil gives you food to eat in the dream and when you are done eating that food you become heavy I don't mean physically, spiritually let me clear this, it's possible for God to do an impactation for you it's possible for God to do an impactation for you in the dream by giving you food, angel's bread it's a spiritual one. But this one I'm talking about, the devil ministers it to you in the dream. And when you are done eating it, you wake up and feel less spiritual. You feel this heaviness upon your body and upon your spirit. If you are the one, I would like to pray with you. She's one of them. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I rebuke that spirit. I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name. Go! In the name of Jesus. Go. Thank you, Father. I thank you in the name of Jesus. You are free in the name of Jesus. You are delivered in the name of Jesus. You are free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I declare freedom. Freedom in the name of Jesus. You are free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. He will minister to you. Who dropped this picture? What happened to the baby? Is dead? The baby was born crippled. That devil is a liar. What did they say?
No socket. This baby will stand and will walk. Let me tell you, if your prayer request gets here, it will be answered. Let me pray for marriages. Lift your hands before I pray for this. Just three things and we'll be done. Marriages. Hallelujah. The Bible says your marriage shall be a blessing. Your children will surround your table. Remember, we always share the scripture here. Please make sure you really lift your hands. Please lift inside and outside. I pray right now. Especially for those that have exceeded the normal time. You, you understand what I'm saying, right? The normal time that should happen. You are a man. You can't get a decent lady that is ready to settle down with you. And now as I'm praying this prayer, hear me. God is going to visit people. But some of you, if you know that you are not walking according to the ways of the Lord, stop it this night. Praise God. You can't be sleeping around, hopping around from man to man. One army officer to another one. One banker to another one. And then say, I don't have a husband. No, no. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate. We are a holy people here and holiness is a big deal. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So as you are lifting up your hands, make sure that you are making a commitment. No sex before marriage. Don't let anybody deceive you. I'm saying it straight to the point. Hallelujah. No sex before marriage. No caressing. No all this nonsense that people do. No. Don't, don't open up yourself for demons. You tie your soul with demonic things. Be sure that you are going to keep many Christian relationships are not pure. Because a lot of people think everybody is doing it. No, not everybody is doing it. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand upon his own? So, sister, just get it straight. Don't say yes to any brother who plans to just... If he does not have enough patience to honor you and wait, whatever is pursuing him, let him carry it out of your life. Hallelujah. I need to say this before I pray for you. God is not a magician. Are you listening to me? This is not a herbal center. This is a place where miracles happen by definite kingdom principles. Hallelujah. So make sure as you are standing here to receive, you are serious with God. And you've been involved in all these things I'm talking about. Stop it this night. Stop it this night. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, you put this as an apostolic platform to help and to build people and to terminate the works of darkness. And Father, this night I pray for your people inside and outside and our online community i declare every yoke of marital delay right now by the fire of the holy ghost by the fire of the holy ghost be free from it now be free from it now anyone here who is of a marriageable age right now we connect you to your life partner in the name of Jesus. And I pray that anyone here who is under any yoke, because there are some of you, it's not just you, all the ladies in your house, some you notice that you marry almost at age 40. No matter what you do, no matter how decent you are, you will never just get a faithful man. Some of you is married men that keep chasing you. As young as you are, you can't get a godly brother. You are coming to church. You are serving in church. The brothers are looking at you as if they are looking at this speaker. And then it's only a married man with children that are old enough to be your age. Who will be disturbing you? That yoke of bondage. This night, Kapoto Sheka, Repato Telebata, Aparato Koposobata. Let that yoke be broken in the name of Jesus. Let that yoke be broken. 
I release you into your marital destiny. I release you. Sisters, I release you. Sisters, I release you. Brothers, I release you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please, is this all the prayer requests? In one minute, we are going to pray. And then, there are three areas, three more areas I need to speak. Finance, breakthrough, this is very important. Please, keep your spirit open. If possible, just be praying in tongues. Let me invite the ministers. Pastor Williams, please come. Bishop, come. We are going to pray. Pastor Williams is going to lead us. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. As the servant of God is speaking on this thing and as we are agreeing, I want you to, this is not a ritual. Don't take it as a ritual. The scriptural revelation behind this, for those of you who are just coming, the Bible says how that, listen, listen, listen. Hezekiah took the threat letter. Are you listening to me? A threat letter was written and the Bible says he took it to the altar and dropped it before God. When Hannah needed a miracle, the Bible says she came to the altar. Are you hearing me? This is the revelation behind this. We don't do anything without revelation. So I want you to connect. Everybody rise up and stretch your hands. Just stretch your hands towards this stage, please. Those outside, just stretch it towards your screen. And begin to pray in tongues. Shake up baladaba. Rakata tapaka prokoto baladaba. Zetala brakata satalibe. Lika lumis ibrakata satalaba. Zebra di kodosh ina satala brakatashi. Eka kasatala bratishi. Zebra ina kalazumi na katashia. Rapata shadoli brate kalabadosh taba. Kesi brodi kata kata bakata satalaba. Lubina ni sumi na kaya na daba satalaba. Eka sukabinis eka lebito shitaba. Lubina na zebra kapata shitalaba. Yesa ni monos kupa kata satalaba. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh Jehovah, Father of all spirits, the great I am, may the subit release in Amakata Sata, Liza Pata Shekabara, the one that divided the Red Sea, Lika Ziprata Shetebara. The one that released manna, Paul released manna from heaven, Jehovah, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I pray for miracles, miracles, miracles upon this prayer request, miracles, visitations, miracles, visitation, far above, far above what they have written, far above, far above, connection, completion, perfections in the name of Jesus completions perfections in the name of Jesus miracles miracles visitation divine visitation Jehovah Jehovah miracle worker upon this request breathe upon it breathe upon it breathe upon it let them be miracles let your people testify in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Jehovah. In Jesus' name, we pray. It is done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are a prosperous ministry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are a prosperous ministry mysteriously prosperous by the hand of God I believe in prosperity are you hearing what I'm saying I believe you cannot truly represent the government of heaven with poverty you cannot help the poor by being one of them are you hearing me and I want to pray for you please believe lift your hands see listen the irrefutable laws of prosperity remains tithing, kingdom investments, and your givings. They open the heaven and position you. And then the blessings begin to come through divine ideas, favor, 
wisdom, the blessings of God upon your hands, strength and long life. Hallelujah. I want to encourage everybody. Please bring out a seed. I can't pray for you for prosperity just like that. Please. Please. This, if you don't have a revelation of what we are doing, just keep your seat, please. This is not some. I won't help you. Let me tell you the truth. I'm not going to help you. It's not just about saying receive. No. Please. God has blessed you. You can help somebody by your side. Please. Please. Bring out something that will cost you. Some of you are greedy and stingy. See, let me tell you something. I pray for you that giving grace will be part of your life. Many of you think God is out to rob. You can't outgive God. Hallelujah. The secret of prosperity is giving. It will never change. There are many of you God has been speaking to you. You won't listen. I can't tell you how many times God has instructed me to empty my accounts. If you see, if your heart is still on prosperity, God will never give you. He said, my son, give me your heart. Until you conquer greed, you are not entitled to handle true riches. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please bring out a seed. Some of you will bring out something that will cost you. Let me tell you, don't pity yourself. Don't pity yourself at all. Don't make foolish, impulsive decisions. Are you hearing me? We are not manipulating people. Don't make stupid decisions that you come outside. And, no, no. Make some of you, God is speaking to you right now. Some of you need to stand for your families. Honestly, honestly. See, if the ministry is blessed and you are not blessed, it means we are fake. Something is wrong. Are you hearing me? I tell you, this, this prosperity oil, there is an oil. It will come upon some of you in a fearful way. Please, inside and outside, I beg you, if you don't have a seed, can you hold the hands of somebody who has a seed? Please connect. Allow the person to hold your hands. Don't feel bad. Please stand up, everybody. This is a very serious thing. Lift your hands and lift your seed. Hear me? Solomon, there was a sacrifice upon the altar. And Solomon said, oh God, oh God, attend unto your people whenever they call you that you will respond and the bible says the glory the shekinah of god came and filled that room. i'm praying i'm praying see i tell you it 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 pains my heart it pains we want to the full gospel you must represent the kingdom in its entirety we don't just want you to be anointed and be begging and be sleeping with men for money no are you hearing what I'm saying? Please lift. Some of you, what will come upon you is the giving grace. Because honestly, for some of you, is greed. Greed. Even to yourself. Lift it up. I want to pray. Oh, God has given us this anointing. And I want to pray. My God, it will happen. It's going to come on like fire. It will fall on many of you. Please help me. My God, I pray the oil of prosperity the power to get wealth at the count of three my God let it fall mightily right now one two three take it take it take it take it take it take it, take it. Take it. Take it. I activate it outside I activate it. Let fire come upon your seed. I give your seed a voice in the spirit. It took a sacrifice to put your family in poverty. We use this sacrifice to bring them out of poverty. It took a sacrifice to enter a covenant of poverty. We take this seed and bring you into the realm of blessing. Psalm 66 verse 12. It said, Thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads. We walk through waters and through fire. 
but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place my god you know we are not fake we are not just trying to do religious jamboree to take money from people i pray my god i give your seed a voice and i instruct it go around the earth gather your kind and return back to the owner i prophesy under this apostolic unction i speak to your seed go around the earth gather your kind go around the earth gather your kind go around the earth gather your kind and return a hundredfold hallelujah please cast your seeds with joy quickly help me please bring the offering basket hallelujah now i want to pray finally before the altar call breakthroughs there are families that need major breakthroughs are you hearing me there are some of you your the way from the day they gave birth to you you have never celebrated entering a house that god gave your own family embarrassment after embarrassment every time they start a building project rain will wash it or something satanic will happen breakthrough is when the limitations that are stopping you are taken away lift your hands the bible says thou shalt break forth on the right and on the left thou shalt break forth please receive it some of you need to call your loved ones and say look a prayer was prayed there are some houses that have been built 10 years 10 years is a cost it's a cost i'm telling you there are some people they are they are lecturers but they are still begging for money to feed this is this is the yoke of bondage there are families that live from hand to mouth some of you as you are looking at me now you are the ones who are the breadwinners of your entire family as young as you are it ought not to be so the bible says a good man liveth an inheritance not taken from his children's children lift your hands please where is the god that brings breakthrough where is that god that changed the story of samaria by the mouth of the prophet where is that god that instructed the prophet to say by this time my god and my king i pray for koinonia in the name of jesus let this breaker anointing like the angel of death in the days of moses let this breakthrough anointing begin to go from house to house house to house house to house we send it to abuja we send it to saria we send it to Kogi state we send it to lagos we send it to kaduna like the angel of death visited his homes this night this night this night i speak this night let this anointing go to families and create the garden of eden let it create the garden of eden hallelujah hallelujah how many of you have noticed the sudden death of professors how many of you have noticed it have you seen the way lecturers are dying like chickens how many of you know it's not normal see the bible says they know not you do not know what is happening this night this night the angel of the lord will move across abu are you hearing me altars of darkness will be destroyed see this is why god put centers like this to legislate on behalf of territories the apostolic grace is not for making mouth is for taking charge is a rule thou in the midst of your enemies the church is the light of the world the church cannot be here and things are happening if your father is a lecturer or you live with a lecturer i want you to lift your hands we want to prophesy that oil of exemption hallelujah 
It's terrible. People are afraid right now because nobody knows who is next. I pray for you. See, when the angel of death, hear me, when the angel of death came to Goshen and Egypt, the angel of death killed everybody. It's just that when he came, he found out that some houses were already killed. When he saw blood on their house, he said these people are already died. And he passed by. I pray that blood of sprinkling, that blood, he said, when I see the blood, Rapato Koparatata, not by accident, not by terrorism. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command supernatural preservation. Receive it now. Supernatural preservation. Receive it now. Every lecturer in APU and in all the institutions in this town, because I already see the arrows of death on some lecturers. The Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing that between now and December 4, I see four other professors going, but we stop it. We change it in the name of Jesus. We stop it. We change it. We stop it. We change it. We stop it. He said, The heaven of heavens, Mapatakata, Rakata Pata, Beto Botoko Talabatika. The heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord, but the earth has He given. Now, let me pray for you. You, you, you. You have no covenant with death. We are entering the ember months now. Hallelujah. Please, see, take seriously the things that happen here. Are you hearing me? Liver is the power of God that is bringing her upstage. It's a sign and a wonder. Just cover her. Hallelujah. Please, we are out of time. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. See, listen. Hear me, those inside and outside. Never believe. Hear me, please. Now, and I don't want you to feel bad. I know that there are a lot of people here that have had to lose loved ones. We've stood by you, but don't let the death of your loved one suddenly make you give room for Satan and say he can ride into your family anytime. Are you hearing what I'm saying? every time death is ravaging people god will summon the people and anoint men to lift up a cry i want to pray for you ember month is the time when people look at how many people just graduate from abu going back they die don't tell me that's the will of god some of you as they are giving your parents work that's it if there is a shrine there is a greater shrine See, this is the speaking of altars. Every altar speak. The Bible tells us that the blood of Jesus speaketh better things. I want to speak on behalf of people. Lift your hands, please. Because many of us travel. There are some of us who are in business. You travel to Lagos. You travel to Kotono. Some of you are moving around. Some of you are coming from different places. My Duguri, Joss, Bauchi. Come out of her now. Out. Out of her. Now. A very violent spirit. Lift your hands. Say after me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that I am protected from the arrows that fly by day and the noisome pestilence I declare that throughout this year I have no covenant with the spirit of death say death hear my voice I am an ambassador and in the name of Jesus the seal of the blood is upon me I am protected 
my family members are protected father in the name of jesus i believe your word and i declare that i enjoy supernatural preservation in my going out and in my coming in say in my going out and in my coming in therefore i pray for you that as you have declared let your eyes live to see the experience in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah you've not given your heart to jesus please remain standing everyone here please remain standing hallelujah you have not given your heart to the lord jesus christ this is a family this is where we are ready to introduce you to the love of your life the bible says whoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away many of us have been struggling you've been struggling some of you are born again you've given your heart to the lord truly but there are encumbrances pushing you away from god right now please everybody stand i know you've been standing please stand for one last time inside and outside let's honor god and let's honor the greatest miracle that is about to happen young and old rich or poor as you hear my voice the holy ghost is going to be talking to some of you and he's going to tell you it is time the bible says in the day that you hear his voice harden not your heart you've never given your heart to the lord or you have found yourself derailing i don't care what you have done there is a home for you tonight as everybody begins to appreciate them i want you to leave your seat and come out right now everybody come out from outside god bless you outside sister brother don't sit back people are coming thank you jesus thank you jesus don't sit back don't wait for somebody to come please keep clapping koinonia no devil will stop you god bless you sir god bless you they are coming please appreciate them don't sit back there are a lot of you outside god is speaking to you brothers god is speaking to a lot of brothers outside don't let your friends stop you don't let your friends stop you keep coming keep coming thank god for the harvest keep coming keep coming shake it take it the devil that will stop you from being saved has been defeated keep coming keep coming god bless you dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye